Well, and I guess I will go into here and say, do not brew. Um, pigtails. Nor do cook pigtail seed. I guess I have to wait. Oh, you're joking about the burrow thing. Okay, I thought you were being literal. That is funny, though. I mean, for whatever it's worth, I've had that happen. I mean, two forts ago, I had a siege go, almost go absolutely horrifically terrible uh, because I thought I turned the burrow on, but didn't. I just marked it and then missed the button when I went to go click it. I actually went back and watched the VOD later, and yeah, no, I hadn't turned the VOD on. I hadn't turned the burrow on. Oh, shit. I thought you looked kind of purple. Well, um... Hmm. <laughs> member of the... Former member of the pungent cult. That might be the best religion name I've ever seen. The Rope of Searing. Hmm. Plenty of gods, a master, and an apprentice. Potentially famous friends I've never encountered before. Were you part of one of my forts previously? That'd be exciting if you were. Who remembers the Roasted Seals? What a name. Yeah, I was never a member of any of my factions before. Was the mayor of the Boulder of Torments. Tournaments, not torments. Hmm. How old is this fort? Uh, two years. Exclamation point fort has the year in it. What is a mechanic that is hidden from most players that you find most interesting? Uh, your average world has about 18 billion spiders. Cave spiders. And brown recluse spiders. And phantom spiders. And the, the uh, underground spiders and the above ground spiders. Bees are calculated and tracked by numbers. Most maps that have bees have about 100,000 bees. And the game's keeping track of their population. Um, the fact that sometimes longer save times and lag spikes can be caused by um, a war breaking out. Um, I agree with the fuck cave spider syndrome. <laughs> I agree with that, but still interesting. Uh, what else? The thing is, I, I don't actually know what people don't know in some cases, but I'm drawing a blank here. You put me on the spot. I'll shout out things as they pop in my brain. What social skills make a good hammer? Uh, somebody with low empathy, generally. Although generally, that actually, you'd want that to be the captain of the guard. Captain of the guard, you just want somebody who's good at intimidating. There's a lot you don't know. True. Um, all animal populations are finite and can go extinct in the world. Generally, uh, pandas go extinct before World Gen ends because they run out of food. All necromancers have an obsession with collecting bodies. How do you feed pandas in this game? By having bamboo on your map. <laughs> that, that literally, you need to have bamboo on your maps. I agree with Zwari. Bonk. Also, hi, Zwari. How are you? Um, wood disintegrates. Enti anything, any furniture made out of wood will eventually completely disintegrate on its own. It just takes about 400 years. Um... Armor is damaged by getting attacked. Woke up, can't fall asleep. Oh, so you're like me last night. Are there downsides to building your fort in the mountain above ground level? No. 
Why would there be downsides to it? The only downsides are the slopes on the edge of the map. Although you might be in an ad right now, I don't know. I'll, I'll respond to that question again after the ad. It's um, a unit system. I know this. Also, Yvonne, hello? Better, what other mechanics are there? Dwarves inherit the um, looks of their parents based on what their parents are, which means it's kind of random, but if you have a very large successful civilization, all of your, a lot of your, that doesn't have a lot of outside populations joining it, you can end up with a lot of dwarves that look very similar. Dwarves worship the gods that their parents worshipped. And so uh, r religions build that way. In World Gen, entire religions can be persecuted. And if you dig into the game's legends, um, and let's say you only have one or two very popular religions in a fort, um, then there's a third religion that shows up that's very unpopular. And let's just say in that particular world, that religion was like in like expelled from that faction earlier on and this one dwarf still worships it because they were missed for what one reason or another or somehow inherited it uh from their parents um and joins the faction they'll get into arguments with other dwarves in your fort because of it and probably not have a very good time in your fort um boogeymen exist and are really cool uh, what else? I don't know. Um, are there downsides to building my fort above ground? No, there is no downsides really to building above ground unless you're in like an untamed wilds biome, at which point, uh, then when stuff is like being ag aggravated, they could scare the dwarves through windows and such, but this isn't an untamed wilds biome, so I'm not too concerned. We might still run into threats, of course, but I'm not too worried. Don't know what I'm going to do with this necromancer. Maybe just... Get, get him to go uh, write some books for us. See what he comes up with. Um, I don't know. Chad, if you think of a mechanic that you know of in Dwarf Fortress that you think people might not know about, let me know. And I'll shout out more when they pop into my brain. I mean, a lot of, like, just saying gnomes exist might actually be a shock to some people. Because you specifically have to settle on either a good or an evil mountain. <laughs> Which isn't, I feel like, probably not a super common embark spot. I, I don't know. Oh, sure. Yeah. Definitely. That's also, that could also be a downside, you're correct. Not a huge one, though. More just annoying. Um, what, you didn't know that there was gremlins in the game, Chestnut? Or not gremlins. Uh, gnomes. Gremlins, gnomes, pff, same thing. Funny guy with hat, funny green man running from air, same thing. I think I'm out of blocks that I'm making again. Am I still making blocks? Yes, I am in fact still making blocks, although I'm having a hard time bleeding this. Let's get out of here. So this is going to be my blocks, my, my masons industry area, or at least an early spot for it. I need 42 blocks. I don't have 42 anything. Should have looked at what that cancellation was first. Oh, uh, here's another thing. Uh, dwarves don't claim cats as pets. Cats claim dwarves as pets independently. They decide the dwarf they like, and then they claim them as a pet. If you see animals running around in a fort, it's because they like a particular dwarf. And animals that like dwarves want to be close to the dwarves that they like. Similar to how to if you have a pet dog, the dog will follow you around. Also, if you have a if a dwarf has a pet dog or a pet cat, and um, a dwarf that or an animal that can be trained for either hunting or war, 
um, basically them being a smarter animal than something that isn't. Um, and then the dwarf dies, they will constantly visit the last place they saw the dwarf and will get depressed. Um, I feel like most people know about alcohol poisoning because of uh, the cats thing. You like giving pet llamas? You had a war grizzly bear become the owner of a dwarf instead of the other way around? That's kind of funny. That checks out. Another bone carver has been possessed. If this one also asks for shells, I'm going to start to think that this fort is cursed. Bones, yes. Okay, that's fine. Leather skin, that's fine. Bones, yes, that's fine. Okay, sweet. Slaughter an animal. Let's go. Also, I've got two baby elephants. You can't see them because they're behind my camera. But see, two baby elephants. Speaking of uh, animals, let us... Chat, I have a question. Goat or llama? Goat, llama, or turkey? Yeah, they're in they're in the basement, but yes, we are in fact... I had the option to embark with elephants, so, like, what are you going to do? Chat's saying llama a whole lot, so... We're going to throw off the Emperor's Groove. Why do we still have sweet pot seeds? That's weird. It's because they hadn't finished growing just yet. Bizarre. The Emperor's New Groove? I'm not an animated movie person. I generally don't go out of my way to watch animated movies because it's just... Not really something that particularly interests me. But The Emperor's New Groove is just one of the best movies I've ever, I've ever seen. Like, just straight up. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. He's supposed to be dead! Yes. I'm sorry, what? I just saw something that really confused me for a second. I was like, what am I... I thought that was something completely different. Okay, let's go up here. around the edge. I realize I just put two beds in that one, but that's okay. Let's cancel that. Go over here and do this. Six bedrooms. See how many more we need. Geotrack, you now have a bedroom. Dastot, you now have a bedroom. Skulet, you now have a bedroom. A couple more. This one now has a bedroom. Actually, there's still quite a few that don't. And you. And you. Assuming all the rest of these have bedrooms already. Yeah, looks like all right, I gotta make a few more bedrooms. Hmm. I guess I could just like extend the mode here a little bit, but this is gonna stop looking cool after a while. It's just gonna start looking kind of like a mess of hallways. Not that it doesn't already look like that, but you know, it'll, it's just gonna start to look worse at a point. Uh, I guess I could cram a few more around the outside here and it won't look annoying yet or in, in a way that bothers me. kid playing make-believe in his soon-to-be bedroom. Um, I'm not sure if it's his soon-to-be bedroom. It might already be his parents' bedroom. Kids tend to play make-believe in the bedroom that their parents live in. And uh, the llama was slaughtered. And they begin a mysterious construction. Ex excellent. I, don't, I didn't even look at what type of floor that was. Let's find out. I'm giving um, these dwarves cabinets. Because they have clothing in their bedrooms, which means they probably want new or places to put their clothes. The reason clothes start to pile up is because they need somewhere to put their stuff. 
I still have Hey Jafar, shut up, blast in your mind. <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame you. I mean, that's genuinely a great movie as well. There's a lot of, like, certain types of th movies from that era that, you know, are probably largely guided by m nostalgia more than anything, but fantastic. Oh, shit! Iden, the bone carver, has created a Duvasith Thaduil, a llama bone cabinet, and offers it to the living fire, which is us. We should take that literally and throw it into the volcano and be like, ah, yes, obviously that's what you mean. This is a llama bone cabinet. All the craftsmanship is of the highest quality. This object is adorned with hanging rings of drotha leather and menaces with spikes of llama bone. Do I put this in this dwarf's bedroom? Because I could do that. They do have meager quarters. Um, goth artifacts. Uh, it's called a fell mood. It happens when a dwarf is maximum stressed, but also there's cer certain other requirements that need to be met based on their mood. Fell mood. Foul and terrible. Yeah, they make super dark artifacts when they um, are in a horrible state, which means that they're actually really rare because it's very rare that dwarves get that upset. They used to be a lot more common back in the days of tantrum spirals and such things. I do like that you call them goth artifacts, though. That's kind of funny. See, even the kids get bedrooms. Hi, Den. Where was your bedroom again? I think I'm going to put this artifact into their bedroom. Even though they've offered it to the fort, we're going to put it up here. Uh, where was, uh, you click on the dwarf and you click on rooms. That's this tab right here. And then you click on this little arrow right here. Boink, and then it takes you to their bedroom. So this bedroom right here is actually Iden and Yushat's bedrooms, which means Yushat is very, very, very proud near his own fine bed. I was near my own bed. I am proud. And uh, feels fondness when speaking with an acquaintance and probably is going to be very happy about the fact that now they have are about to get, like, the nicest ever, like... Llama bone cabinet. They are in the nearest sentient thing made into an artifact. I once had a fell mood made out of a necromancer experiment, and I was very proud. Because it wasn't a necromancer experiment that was part of my faction. It was some random dude who happened to be there. It was very funny. What, do you find it a bit of a shame that they're, hard, they're so hard to do, or...? I personally feel that necromancers, every single time they go into a fell mood, it, every single time they have a strange mood, it should be a fell mood. Or, like, there needs to be some way of, like, making them more common. Although, the thing I actually want from necromancers is I, I, I want them to be able to, you know... Also, we're training with humans, which is also interesting. I want them to be able to make necromancer experiments in fort mode. Greetings to your people, says the human. We have much to discuss. What pets do you have? It's interesting that I get to speak with you guys and I don't get to speak with the, the elves. I guess we have a better reputation with these humans. Or a better faction reputation with the humans. You buy a slug off of them. Do you guys have fun animals? <laughs> grizzly bears. Bring me grizzlies! I don't need no black bears, but I do I do need your grizz and also your elephants. Maybe that's how we got elephants on Embark. It's because we have a maybe we just have a really good relation with the humans. They have pandas? <laughs> I'ma buy some pandas, and if they bring them, I'ma make panda hats out of them. <laughs> because how often do you see pandas? And then when we make meals out of them, it'll be Panda Express. Earrings and short swords is what they want. Okay. I'm just going to start making bone earrings. 
Oh, never mind. Don't have any bones to make any earrings. God damn it. You know, speaking of, like, fast food I've never had, I've never had Fan Panda Express, but whenever I hear people talking about Panda Express, it's always about how they almost died or how awful it was, and you know what? I don't feel like I'm missing much. I completely forgot that we found those. Uh, let's throw all this stuff together. Can't really sell them too many tables or thrones because those are going to get heavy quick. Um, That I can sell. Apparently I have a bunch of random toys. I'm actually going to keep for the kids. I'm not sure how I've ended up with a bunch of, like, grown stuff, but apparently I have a bunch of grown stuff. I don't think I bought it. Maybe I did. Like, how did I get a grown wooden shield? Well, it's weird. That or the dwarves brought it that one time, which is possible. You know what? I'm actually going to sell you guys these mechanisms. Holy shit, that's an expensive mechanism. I'm going to keep the Gabriel ones, but I'm going to sell the rest. It's got to have, like, a diamond on it or something. So I'm seeing expansive. I could sell them a very ex fancy, expensive gravestone, but I think I'll hang on to it. Um, I don't really have too much to trade. Uh, I got a big raid this morning, but also new fort. Uh, we've been sitting at a close to, like, 250 viewers for most of the day um but i got raided by shen so shen dropped like 400 people on me or something but um i don't know i think we are starting to see the early build-up for adventure mode 2 it's a bit too spicy as somebody who actually chat food show and tell for a second spicy food and I like hot sauce shit's too expensive so I make my own this is eight dollars of hot peppers um and a month of time and like half an onion and a carrot and a few other like veggies that's like un a couple dollars maybe so like ten dollars of hot sauce made a jar this big times two and I gave one of them to my aunt and uncle As not hot <laughs> It's definitely hot sauce, trust me. It's the date that I bottled it. Guess you gotta shake that to get the hot oil mixed in? No, not really, actually, because it's fermented. It's blended fermented, so there's no, like, separation that happens. But... If I wasn't making it uh, blended fermented, then yes, I would have to do that. Oh, this is something else I can bring. Keep the bolts, sell those, and sell those. This. Yeah, I, I like I like spicy food. But I, I've never been to Panda Express, so I have no idea what their level of spicy is. All right, at least Napalm Sideburns got here quickly this time. Cool bearded fella. Sure. Uh, do you have any preference on job? I don't really have a military currently. Table cut agates. I will take all of your logs. Well, they didn't bring me anything particularly interesting. They did bring donkeys and cow's milk and horse's milk. So I, will, I will buy the barrels. I will buy the buckets. I'm buying stuff that's made of wood because this map doesn't really have wood. So stuff that like 
needs to Sasquatch armor. That's kind of dark. <laughs> Just killed a Sasquatch and like made him into armor. That's <laughs> hmm. I'm tempted to also buy these bags. These bags are also kind of a pain. Could buy the rice flour. Oh, okay. I don't need the flour. Uh, I will buy the rope reeds. And I'll buy the sandbags, because you know what? We're going to need those at some point. Buy some leather. Giant magpie leather, apparently. They have panda leathers, so it sounds like they're way ahead of me on the Panda Express front. Please tell me they brought me... They brought me Flying Squirrel Brain. <laughs> I feel like that's like, they did! Those murderers! They're killing pandas and selling me their lungs. He says as he buys it. Okay, well, let's trade. That's very funny. I mean, I buy milk from traders because barrels are one of those things that's just kind of a pain to make, right? Dude, are you undead? Like, <laughs> he doesn't feel anything ever. Roses are red, violets are blue. I have been subbed 14 months to you. For a second there, I thought his last name was Mini God, and I was about to burst out laughing. Um, I didn't look, said now. Said now. Uh, 14 months is a long time, Devilish. Thank you very much for continuing to support the channel, though. It really does mean a lot. Like, seriously, it really does mean a lot. So thank you for continuing to keep that subscription alive and for continuing to support this channel. One subscription at a time. Let's just get these bodies out of here because there's still bits of dead bug bats that my elephants murdered horribly. So I'm going to dig this all out. But what I'm going to do is once I'm done digging this all out, is I'm going to start channeling this down so that this lower area, well, maybe not all the way up to here, actually, but specifically so that this lower area down here will have two tiles tall, and then these trees can start growing, like these, because these are just going to die because they're only one layer high right now. But once I dig it down a layer, then they'll have a higher chance at long, longer term survival. I could also dump some water in here, potentially, but. So there's water down here, but I have to pump it. But that wouldn't be too hard to do either. I can also do the same thing down here, for this lower layer. People call him Mini God. I mean, it's a pretty good nickname. He does dream of ruling the world. So, a hen chest. You would like a dwarf. Um, do you have any specific preferences aside from just a, a lad with a beard? Because happiest lad with beard is the the gem setter. We also have Dastot, the gem setter. Uh, we have um, Endoc, the spinner. Spinner and Sickler. But uh, do you have any preferences? Uh, no complaints today. Numbers have been good. Lots of lots of conversation. I got a little nippy for a minute there, but I've recovered. I hope Chad has too. Man, thank you very much for the, I think, second five pack of gift subs. It's been a little slow on gift subs, but I have nothing to actually complain about because yesterday was crazy. So, <laughs> uh, the spinner sounds chill. Endoc the spinner.
So thank you very much. Appreciate you, chat room. You are 53 years old, and you have poor analytical ability, but a developed sense of empathy. He is a nervous wreck and does not participate in physical confrontations. He works to square his natural tendency with his respect and martial prowess. He is often cheerful, and he tends to not reveal personal information. He has little interest in joking around, and he does not often feel lustful. He tends to ask others for help with difficult decisions and does not easily fall into love and rarely develops positive feelings. He is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance or culture, and he occasionally can overindulge. He inhales sharply when he's angry, and he runs his fingers through his hair when he becomes exasperated. He needs alcohol to get through the working day. Welcome to the fort. And also, holy shit, there's toys in this room? Oh, that's adorable. I think these these, these two dwarves have kids, and so there's a bunch of puzzle boxes and toys in here. I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's kind of it's kind of neat. Aw, exactly. I agree. Uh, but for the rest of this dwarf, um, you don't have any friends nor family. You're a member of the de denomination of Glitter. Uh, you do feel pleasure near your own fine bed. You didn't feel anything after seeing the dead bodies of those bats. You may be a nervous wreck, but you do personally value sacrifice, and you value family, and you value artwork, and you dream of creating a masterwork someday, uh, which you are well on your way to doing because you are a high master spinner. You've been spinning thread for quite some time. You do have your own meager quarters, but that's about it. You're an adequate gem cutter as well. You know what, for this one? Uh, I think we'll just say one. Oops, no, that's actually not what I wanted. I wanted one. Everybody, and then one. Rock, blocks. 500, just normal rock blocks at all of them. And we'll get to that. And let's just plop a second one down here. No, that's diary, not granite. I just want things to match colors, like, locally. It's gonna spin his little heart out for an artifact one day. It's gonna spin his little heart out, and it's gonna dance away, and he's going to uh, feel some serious emotions about the permanent existence of that artifact. Um, let's do cop Let's check out my copper ore. How much copper do I have currently? Which should be native copper. That is not true, because it's all sitting right there. Oh, it's copper nugget. 45. Um... Forty-five. Good job, G Fin and GeoTrack. And it appears that we're going to be getting an ad break in a moment. I have a question. If I tell you to polish stones, can I tell you what type? Yes, I can. Um, I want you. Slates. I feel like polished granite would be kind of pretty. I feel like polished granite would be pretty pretty would be pretty. And you up here no, not you, you here are going to encrust Furniture with gems. I have a question for you, Vanguard. Do beavers lay eggs? <laughs> also, I appear to have had the humans dump a bunch of stuff in here, so yay, free stuff. Not entirely sure what caused that, but something did. Platypuses. Ah, now that I actually don't know. I've never caught one. <laughs> that, 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 beaver does not equal platypus. Very different things.
Because I'll have you know, platypuses do not, in fact, or have any relation to beavers that I'm aware of. I mean, I would just check the wiki. I, I don't know about in-game. In I mean, I, I know what they do in real life. I don't know what they do in wiki, so I don't know if they produce leather. They may or may not. Not everything does. They might be too small to. They might, though. Because, like, chickens don't, I don't think. But turkeys do. It's a duck with a beaver tail and a dumb sense of humor. Can you actually influence dwarves' behavior and preferences with religion? Not in fort mode, but you can uh, question dwarves' beliefs and uh, ways of thinking in adventure mode, and if you do it enough, you can convince them to change their mind about things like whether or not they think war is a good idea, but not in fortress mode. They do lay eggs, no milk. Got it. Because, like, not everything is usable for everything. I don't think that there's anything that, like, produces... I, I, I think that if Platypus has produced eggs, milk, and leather, they would be one of the most popular creatures to play as, <laughs> to have in your fort in, in, in the game period. All the time. Let's just get slate blocks built along here. Deconstruct the slate. Those those granite blocks along there, that's fine. They are pretty rare, yeah. But even if they were rare, people would mod them into their game. If they did those types of things. I'm sorry, what? So, oh, I read that as a migrant has arrived. I was like, I have not hit the population cap, excuse me. You're an interesting dwarf. Remember the Faith of Wandering. Competent mace dwarf, eh? Person who respects the development of a skill doesn't really see the point of working hard. Never pass up the chance for a good fist fight. Fearful in the face of imminent danger. Ah. Tends to avoid crowds. Likes parties in the abstract. Well, here comes another big one. I think. I think I need a, to prep a mayor's office next. Ooh, a high master doctor. High master wound dresser. I think I need to re-up on my hospital employees, actually. Some rando peasant. Worships a god named Fergig? The hell? Communion of Oracles. That doesn't sound like a real name, Fergig. It's like someone misspelled Fergie. Novice Mark's dwarf. Beekeeper. That's a fake job. Get a real job. Like telling me someone telling them that telling you that they're a Twitch streamer. Well, that's up to the player to group them up. They don't group. If you just tell them to go kill a thing, they won't group up and then go kill a thing. You have to tell them to station somewhere, group up, wait for them to group up, and then go tell them to kill a thing. So that's up to you. They will do it if you tell them to do it. You just have to tell them to do it. Often, Too often one guy runs in and gets destroyed because he sees them, and he's brave. The rest of them aren't brave. So they'll, if one of them is like brave in the face of imminent danger, perhaps a bit foolheartedly, and the rest of them are all like neutral, one of them will just be like, danger, charge! And the rest of them will be like, uh, dude... It's all based on their personalities. It's literally all it is. On re relying on work orders less, you end up making tons and overproducing. Build guild halls. Like, wait, uh, question. Why are you relying, what are you relying on work orders for? Are you relying on work orders to keep your dwarves busy or are you relying on work orders for something to do as the player? Like, wh what, what, what are you exactly relying on work orders for? All right, let's, um, hmm. Let's see what else can I do? Gavro blocks. I have enough gab for that. Okay. 
this. So, they did just... Oh, wait, no, that, that was the elves that left all this stuff here. Why did the elves just leave a bunch of crap in my fort twice? What the hell? Huh. Okay. Oh, that's perplexing. I really like the color of Orthoclase, so I'm really happy we have it. I also need rock doors. Mm, okay, I need to mine more of those. This is too dire right now. Enough. You had a dwarf make a platinum mall? Hell yeah. Are you going to go shop at that platinum Best Buy after you go to the platinum Walmart? Wait, different kind of mall. Personally, you can't, you can't get better than the platinum Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, let, let, let's be real here for a second. Given how little labor actually takes for dwarves to sustain themselves? This is true. Overproduction is a pretty common... I don't know if you'd call... Is overproduction an issue? Are elves dead? No. Those are all turkeys. But they do keep dropping stuff on the way out of my fort. I'm not sure why. Probably the random camel running around in the hallways actually probably is what did it. <laughs> Unless you're asking about something else, in which case, I don't know. Getting into these bedrooms is going to be, like, confusing as hell visually, but... I can't tell if I like this bedroom design or hate it. <laughs> I might hate it. Although if I hate it, it just means I won't ever do it again. It's one of it's one of your favorites. What the like? Are you saying you make this design all the time type deal, or is it one of your favorites that I've done? That I've done. Interesting. Why is that? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the first, probably of many, infinite stockpiles. Which is going to be for everything that isn't limestone, marble, kilonite, lignite, chalk, dolomite, gypsum, that... Actually, you know what? Let's just say none of these. Let's just say all other stone. Yeah, we'll just say other stone. You go right here. All other stone. Gonna roll south. Make it out of a diode block. Make a single one of these. Unc what? Minecart's lost? Excuse me. I beg your pardon. Why do you know, you know, push minecart up? I guess I haven't watched it do a full lap yet, so. Oh. Hmm. 
<laughs> well. Huh. I have a suspicion as to what happened. Uh, the suspicion is that uh, somebody got tired while pushing the minecart and stopped and just decided to go get a snack and said. And um, upon leaving the minecart, uh, it just went wee and then went splat into a dwarf. Uh, that's probably what happened, but uh, awkward. Let's just uh, real quick whip up a hospital. And then we'll um, figure out what duty from there. Uh, let's make a traction bench. Make two of them. And uh, also check, do I have a mayor yet? I do not yet have mayor. We may or may not have a mayor yet. We may or may not be having an election right now, though. He's going to sue you. Fortunately, capitalism doesn't exist in Dwarf Fortress, so uh, they, don't ha they don't understand the concept of a lawsuit, let alone suing me. Anyway, let's get that dwarf rescued. Fortunately, once uh, on the list of things that don't exist in Dwarf Fortress, OSHA doesn't exist, so it can't upset them. Besides, we are rescuing them, and we're going to tend to their wounds. They'll heal, hopefully. What are my thoughts on RimWorld? I really liked it during the early access, but I don't like the way it was balanced post-early access, so I stopped playing a long time ago. And these days, I find it just kind of dull. Dull and samey. Um, okay, well, you'll get dealt with. Ability to stand lost. I'm assuming you just, yeah, you just have broken legs, so you probably just need a splint. All right, um, hmm. Maybe attraction bench too, which I will get to. Let's go to pets and livestock. Slaughter, slaughter. Slaughter. Sweet. Surplus value out of dwarves. Yep. Just making sure actually that I do have other. Oh, nope, I don't. <laughs> okay, well, I needed to re run through all of this stuff again anyway. So, Baka Glass, you can be the doctor. Nil, you are a good diagnoser. Might as well get the surgeon in here. The bone doctor, actually no, bone doctor, you can be Erdim. And uh, surgeon can be... Hey, Urist, why not? You've died. Oh, actually no, sorry. Urist, you can do this. I don't have an, any even remotely experienced surgeons, which is a little bit concerning. Erdem, you can have that job. Yours, you can be removed from this job. I'm missing a bone doctor. All right, Nil, you can be the bone doctor. You gotta go slaughter some animals? I mean, those were unrelated rem like thoughts that popped into my brain. Need stitches, need setting, need dressing, needs a mobilization. So I do, in fact, need a um, traction bench. Well, actually, no, no, I don't. It doesn't need traction. Mostly just need just pretty advanced surgery. Is getting the dressings and everything that you're needing. Also, I see a baby dwarf. Cog, the dwarven baby. That's adorable. Okay, so let's go right here and just say, actually, let's just go here and say tin, uh, copper minecart. Just make a couple. And um, chat room, I'm going to let you guys follow this dwarf. Uh, so you, you guys get to follow uh, Cole the Lime Maker. I'm going to go grab a sandwich because I am hunger free. It is almost 5, it is 5.20 p.m. And I ate breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning. So if you're hanging out in the Twitch chat, can I get a round of beers? If you're hanging out in the YouTube chat, can I get a round of beers? And uh, at some point... Blue Mond uh, in the YouTube chat. I will make a video about why I stopped playing RimWorld, but that today is not that day. I will be back. Uh, cheese, pickle, and I think lettuce. I can't remember what I put on it last night. It was like, probably mustard, likely. Anyway, I'll be back in a
Yeah. Someone has grown to become a turkey hen. Well, ain't that exciting? It's okay. I wasn't going to be gone for super long. <laughs> Anyone else try to click okay? Uh, I mean, I did. Did you? I, I mean, sometimes when I watch Dwarf Fortress, I try and zoom in on other people's streams. You know, I'm kind of amazed the moods are as good as they are. But I guess it is a calm biome, so. So for this squad, I'm actually going to set them to ready. And we're going to make copper swords and copper bucklers. And we're gonna go, oops, I can type with one hand. And we're going to go start acquiring books from abandoned locations. Uh, it's a volcano library fortress. Also, I have Blitzmark. My poor bloody turkey. All right. Um. you down here. Rooms be looking like a hive. I don't see anything wrong with that. You managed to make it so that all of your dwarves are in a neutral mood or happier. I hey. mean, oh, 165 population. It's a pretty big population, too. It's interesting that they're all hanging out in the library, but not actually doing anything. I guess they've run out of books to read, probably. I should probably make them a temple. Which I was in the process of making, and I was going to put the temple over here, but I'm taking way too long to actually get it, the thing constructed, because, you know, they're not cutting the basalt quick enough. I guess what I should actually do then let's just dig up here and build the temple. I just haven't decided exactly where to put it yet. I'm, I've, I've had so much in this is like I think this fort might have the record for me for analysis paralysis for la of the last year. I don't know why, but I'm just having a really hard time deciding where to put things. You know this will be a lot easier. this, this is basalt. Gabriel. I put the temple right here. It's going to be a large room. You've lost like half of your military because you dug into a cavern and like 40 fish people on mounts ported. Ah, yeah. How long were you in the cavern before they poured in though? Because that's kind of crazy if they're already there and waiting for you. Because <laughs> they're sort of like supposed to wait until you are in the cavern destroying it first. But if they're already there, yeah, that's kind of terrifying. Extra. 
Actually, I could do the, the way up right here. Let's do it right there. Kind of want to have another wing of the library over here or something else, but... I'm kind of thinking about a bridge from here to here. some point. If you don't like them, as in, like, you don't want to play with them, you can disable them in the difficulty options. Chestnut. Just a heads up. Which I have done a number of times. <laughs> I mean, technically, my first fort ever, like, actually defeating them was the last one. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, they, they stay stealthed for quite some time. Serpent men kill one of your forgotten beasts. We're so afraid to open that one. Yeah, it's always terrifying when you see a really scary looking forgotten beast appear and then it's just like, it just dies the second it walks on your screen and you're, and you're just sitting there going, uh. Another one? Also, how did I discover that? That's kind of concerning. Oh uh, yeah, they are kind of broken. I tend to agree. All right, pardon me, what the fuck? Oh. Well, I need to fix that. a bit too far over. Okay, so you guys, what weapons are you going to go equip? You're currently making a direct coffer. Which isn't at all what I needed you to do. I needed you to go get weapons, but you're going out to gather plants. What plants exactly? How about this? How about I erase all of these jobs? Go up a couple layers, go all the way over, go down a couple layers, and erase them all. Does that make you turn around? Well, let's just suspend this and follow you. Let's see where you're going exactly. Ah, that's where they're going. Makes sense. Turn around, dwarves. Because these caves have cave crawlers and giant cave spiders, so I gotta get back inside. Yeah, the dwarves can't even run anymore. Yeah, no, that's the dwarves' biggest, like, failure slash weakness is exhaustion. Like, all you need is the dwarves to get exhausted, and then you're just doomed, basically. Like, you have no chance of survival if your dwarves are overexerted. Which is a bit of a shame, but... It is what makes it possible for other factions to fight the dwarves. Because dwarves are so ridiculously strong. I don't know, when one wanders into a cave trap that I haven't built? Probably. I've seen, like, maybe three in my entire time playing this version, so... I have no idea when we're gonna get a pet GCS. <laughs> because I've seen so few of them in this version. So, actually, counterpoint. You tell me when we're going to get a pet one. Because I only ever see their webs. I don't ever see them. Here.
Your glass maker is making an artifact uh, that's more cloth than glass. Gotcha. He's being artsy, and they had to grab all three types of cloth. Oh, really? Wow. You don't see that very often. You really do not see that super often. Begone fear indeed, yes. But I do really like that the biggest ability that dwarves have um, for long-term survival is literally the fact that they get martial trances, which just stop them from being... Which just stop them from getting tired. That's literally all they do. Any gems I can cut? I don't think so. I'll keep up that job just in case. There's so many people applying to become monster slayers in and they haven't seen a giant cave spider yet. Well, I mean, apparently this world has, like, huge amounts of cave dragons, too, but... Oh, shit. I just got to state that um, Dope Throne has reissued, like, all of their records. Damn. I already spent too much money on a tape today. I don't know if I want to spend an additional, like, 50 bucks on a record. I got the tape. I'm good. If dwarves invented inhalers, they'd conquer the world. I'm not entirely certain that inhalers work that way. Because, like, inhalers aren't, like, an energy... Like, they don't wake you up, do they? I, I don't know. I've never actually had to take an inhaler, but... Are you implying that all dwarves have asthma? <laughs> Although now I'm realizing I don't know if inhalers have other purposes outside of asthma, so... The dynamic of monster slayers and you and you tend to keep your caverns semi-open. Yeah, I mean, I, I got nothing against monster slayers. I just like to be careful with my dwarves, I guess. All right, let's um jump up to here and uncancel this. Let's also shear animals. And spin thread. This is quite the <laughs> quite the process. Although actually, I don't need any of these. So let's just do those. Also, an ad break finally hit. Yeah, I I don't I can't remember the last time I had an uh, an artifact that required all three types of cloth. I've had, like, multiple types of metal. Although, I, it's also pretty rare that I get, like, specific types of... What's the word? Um, it's very rare that I get specific types of anything demanded. Yeah, I was going to say, do they have access to your caverns? Although, even if your caverns are open, I've definitely had monster slayers in the past worry that just kind of hang around in the tavern and don't do shit, so... But if the cavern is open, they usually eventually wander down there. You hate it when DF crashes? Ugh. Do you know what caused it? Don't forget that crash logs actually work now and are useful now. Okay, we should be trading with dwarves pretty soon, too. Look at all the baby elephants. Look at them all. They're so cute. They end up dying to a cave crocodile? Yeah, it's usually something super underwhelming. I don't mind, like, monster hunters. I just kind of don't go out of my way to 
take care of them, nor care, or nor cultivate their existence in my forts. Bring zero weapons. I really, I had, I had a monster slayer who showed up at the end of the last fort who just had two books, which is pretty good. It's gonna kill them with knowledge, I suppose. With enough time to preparation, he can study any foe to death. Or kill them with boredom by reading them poetry or something. And that sort of stuff amuses the hell out of me, but... We made you open caverns to get the silk? Wow. Something I do like about evil biomes is evil biomes often have, um... Evil biomes often have spiders on the surface, like brown recluse spiders or something that give silk. Same with, like, phantom spiders. Although I think, think phantom spiders do something bad, and I'm not sure what. He was a mage before mages existed. I mean, that, that is true. Mages do not, in fact, exist in Dwarf Fortress. Neither do wizards. Although you can sometimes get images of wizards, which... And there, the word wizard exists, because wizards once existed. A much older version of the game. Allegedly. I do actually really like that there are creatures that don't exist that the dwarves tell stories about. And write and draw about and draw pictures of. I kind of wish that there was more creatures like that. You know the things like centaurs and whatnot, because I, I think that sort of st that sort of stuff is just really interesting. Yeah, exactly. Dwarves have arrived to trade once again. So, if I'm not mistaken, they wanted legging. They wanted uh, rings. Uh, so I started making bone rings. Ring, ring. What? Oh, they're probably all in bins, actually. Buckets, cabinets, handware. Okay, we'll sell these gloves. I can sell these caps. Sell these pants. I realize those are steel leggings and I don't care. I don't really want them. Um. Trying to think, what else can I sell you? That all just. Yep, can sell those. About this. Also, yep. And that's just that. Okay, sweet. Easy enough. Send this dwarf to go trade. You just convinced your king that is good. That is that going to be you? Convicted your king. Convicted your king of what? Also, no, not really. Although it does imply that the king might commit crimes again, which might be a problem. But convicting your king of a crime is impressive. <laughs> Kind of funny, but no, that's, that's not going to give you any negative impact. They'll try and still do their job from prison. Um, it'll probably piss them off greatly, but... I don't think that's going to cause any just, like, straight-up negative things to happen. Do I watch anime? No, I'm an adult. I don't watch children's cartoons. Jokes aside, uh, I, I used to date and live with somebody who was a massive weeb. So I kind of go out of my way to avoid it now. It's not that I have anything initially, intentionally against it. It just kind of remi reminds me of shitty days. And I was never particularly into it. Like, there's, there's good anime out there. I don't go out of my way to watch anime, if that makes any sense. I also generally don't go out of my way to talk about anime. It's 
That's why you convict a scapegoat, but then literally every single dwarf in your entire fortress who values the law gets pissed. All right, uh, I'm your liaison from the Mountain Homes. Let's discuss your situation. The world is the same as ever. What requests do you have of our merchants? It took me a second to get the joke control. I had to read it out loud in my head. Um, I'm just going to ask for wood. That's all I'm going to do. That's all I really need. Please bring me wood. You want shields, bucklers, and blocks. What? <laughs> okay. If I don't get ahead, if I don't keep up with this, we're going to um, start getting behind. So let's just do 25 more beds. Well, I, I had to like sound it out in my head, but because I thought you were still talking about, um, I thought you were still talking about scapegoats for the king. Hello, sentient. I hope you slept well, did? Actually, I need to double check if I have a... All right, well, I will buy those steel and platinum bars, definitely. I will buy those logs, of course. And I did ask them to bring me piggies, which they did! Excellent. Um, I will buy the rum, the papaya... I will not buy the expensive-ass papaya wood barrel. Milk, milk, rum. So everything but that bottom one. Buy the bismuth crossbow, because why not? Fancy shirt, because why not? And then as much of the cloth as I can afford. Eh, which is none of it. Not all of it, but hopefully a decent amount. I also don't really want the bins. I love it when you accidentally click on the bin instead of the stuff in the bin. Well, I'm just doing the two of these, so that's enough. Let's buy the thread. It's cheap and it's something to do. We'll buy that book, which is The World of the Forest. And I will buy as much of the cheese as I could. So not much of the cheese. I was going to say, as much of the cheese as I can afford. I can't even afford one of them. So trade. Done. Thanks. Easy peasy. Okay, so I've got this little squatty now. Let's uh, tell him to equip you stuffy again. I'm going to go here. Press Y and then type in... Uh, Actually, let's just back out of here. And, okay, so who's, who's this? Clockworks, we're gonna remove you from... Oh, that's interesting. Okay, well, I'm gonna take you out of this. We're gonna move this to probably Dacost. And go back to Miners and then say, Cashmere. Get out of here and Napalm. Get out of here. Although Napalm is the broker, although Napalm did just trade. So I'm going to go here and let's pause the game and let's find an abandoned location close by with books. Like this. This is the monastery of Waitmirth. Truth's cloudy. Is a book. The Hermetic Law is going to go on an acquiring, seek and acquire mission of acquiring books for our fortress. After this dwarf finishes climbing all the way up and out of here with the um, boulder that they are currently carrying. There's only three of us, of course, so it'll take a little bit, but I think that this is a good opportunity for my dwarves to learn their way around attacking things and gives us knowledge. Isn't Dakos the dwarf with the broken leg? That's fine. Their trees can't be that far away, right? 
Nyoom. Off the map you go. Blockworks is the only one we're still waiting on. Who is still hauling a diorite boulder. Good for you. Are you going to take that diorite boulder with you? Off the map. Okay, so you put it down. Well, that's good. What did you grab? You grabbed the iron short, an iron short sword and a fancy-ass backpack, a fancy-ass buckler. This one is menacing with well-crafted marble. Ooh. And uh, the sword uh, is decorated with drothel of bone. Nice. And um, the backpack he grabbed is also decorated with, with drothel of bone and hanging rings of jackal bone. Grabbed two fishes and uh, ran off the map. So they're going to run not too far away and go do stuff. Can you be the necromancer? Sure, if you insist. You're going to go romance all of the necks. Mincot is your name. Raising the dead to be your game. The funny thing about this dwarf is this dwarf is a necromancer. Somehow less insane than that other dwarf. <laughs> the Zasset dwarf. Um, is prone to strong feelings of jealousy, uh, relies on the advice of others during decision making, is quick to form negative views about things, and does not go out of his way to help others. Tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects, lives a fast paced life, and uh, that dwarf is withdrawn from society. I'm going to keep following this one. He's often moved to mercy, and he generally finds himself to be quite hopeful about the future. Bites his nails when he's annoyed, and shakes his finger up and down when he's excited. When greeting others, he always smiles nervously. Uh, he's thinking hard, and he has a habit of licking his lips. He becomes very rigid when he's angry, and he needs alcohol to get through the working day, and is starting to work slowly due to its scarcity. Also dreams of ruling the world. Uh-oh, we got a power dispute here. Um, and values merrymaking parties, and views loyalty unfavorably, values knowledge, and doesn't particularly care about craft worship. Um, likes Orthoclase, Sterling Silver, and Lace Agate, as well as, uh, the sheen, the words of the fragrant sheen glimmer and the sound of the pristine loot. Um, has been part of a billion different factions, and um, isn't the mayor yet somehow. <laughs> Still don't have a mayor. Speaking of uh, mayor, I'm actually going to go up to the library. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to... Geotrack's already been assigned, been assigned to here. I'm going to put the necromancer in here, too. But, uh, Geotrack, are you hanging out in here? Ponder truth! Uh-oh. That's interesting. He's optimistic after him. That. Huh. Yeah, I, I think that Geotrax Dwarf is still more crazy than that one. So we have two dwar two male dwarves who dream of r ruling the world. One is a necromancer, and the other one reads just like a goblin because he was raised by goblins. And it's like, man, I, I really want those two dwarves to just, like, be gay and get married and so I can have evil dwarven kings but you know it's never gonna happen <laughs> but man if only rule of the world will be a guild at this rate <laughs> and it's just gonna be playing that that one Beyonce song on repeat the whole time Did I not? I did queue up normal ass rock blocks. I mean, Tears for Fears works too. You know. Shout is unironically one of my favorite songs ever written. All right, let's uh, jump over to here, throw a copper minecart onto this. Start getting all this stuff put away. Whenever I scroll through this layer quickly, I always think that this under like in here is uh, miasma because it's like the right color. Okay, so this is going to be a temple. Now the question is, do I go with a popular god? God of beauty is really popular, damn. Rithul? I 
I think I... Actually, do I have any popular religions? Let's see. Laura. Shoutouts to the dwarf who just worships Laura, whoever that is. I like how the god called the dead is the god of death. I mean, who's even surprised? I wonder what the dead is the god of. It's like asking, I wonder what fame is the god of. Obviously trees, uh, the rainstorms, lightning, and freedom. And this is actually just the Batman god, Botham. It should have been called Gotham, but, you know, jewels, minerals, darkness, the night, moon, sky, and stars. God, it's Depth of Merc, the cat god of caverns. Man, there's some crypt fun beer, gods in this. Beer, crypt What's up, Too Tall Dad crypt Gaming? Beer. Thanks for the fifth month. Welcome back. Checking to get a big round of beers for Too Tall Dad. Returning. Keep that subscription alive. Let's just make this a generic area. Anything goes temple, I don't worry about uh, being more specific a little later. I have an offering place. Nope. I do not. I'm doing this so that I can smooth these far walls. That's all I'm doing. Meanwhile, Muthcat the Blacksmith has created a Gazothiglslig? Aran Rab, a uh, copper crutch, and offers it to the living fire. I think that my dwarves have returned from that mission, by the way. This is a copper crutch. All craft ship is of the highest quality. The item on the item is an image of Snang Snap Strap Jackals, the Goblin, and Dur Shine Shrine Bell, the human in copper. Snang Strap Jackals is cringing. The Dur is laughing. The artwork relates to the slashing of the gob to the slashing of the goblin Snang's right lower arm by the human Dur in the mid-spring of 211 during Kok Azdum. Edzum. There we go. The assaults of boring. <laughs> Why is it boring though? <laughs> Why were the assaults so boring? What's up, Francisco? How are you doing? Uh, I think the hospital will go here. It's going to be a multi-level hospital. Where I could easily put a guild hall on the end. If I wanted to. But regardless, it's going to have like a little viewing spot up here to look down. Um, these are going to be different operating rooms. And then down on this lower layer... I will make bedrooms, basically. Um, although right now I'm trying to decide I want this upper layer to look. This could also end up being like an office of sorts. That is pretty, it is pretty rad, yeah. I'm, I'm actually like super okay with that artifact. That's a cool artifact, I guess, is the better way of putting that. Dwarves are back. Let's see how the, the, the first round of thieving went. We searched it. Give me the town. Um, birth of rusts and composi composition and beyond. All right, well, let's go get another one. Another round. Is your little dwarf still alive? Who freeways? For everyone. Freeways is currently pondering migratory patterns and is interested after pondering migratory pa patterns. However, you are bored after leading an unexciting life for too long and you would like to practice a craft. You have your max amount of dwarves. You can only redeem one dwarf per stream. I said it like that intentionally because I was tired of one or two people getting every single redeem like you just attempted to. Because I don't think that that's really fair. Which is part of the reason I stopped doing the system initially. So, 
cry all you want, but I'm not going to change it back. Let somebody else redeem it. You can redeem a dwarf on another stream. There will be more opportunities. You didn't redeem a dwarf this stream. Yeah, you did. You've redeemed a dwarf within 24 hours. It's once every 24 hours. And you redeemed a dwarf yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, I think, weren't you the first? In the last fort? Or one of the last in the last fort? You were in the last fort, which was yesterday. So that would be within 24 hours. Oh, yeah, no, you redeemed a dwarf. But yeah, I'm trying to keep it somewhat fair-ish for people, okay? And also, if you were trying to do it in the last 10 minutes, it was redeemed 10 minutes ago, too. This is one of my biggest annoyances with this shit. Is like, I wish that I that we could just have a system that wouldn't cause people to complain regardless of, like, what I do to try and make it as fair as possible. And regardless of what I do, people complain. And it's like, cool, I can never win. Read the last word story, give me a sec. Um, merchants are leaving soon, that's fine. Okay, so tacos with basalt and forks and chestnut men, but cashews dogs. What? Dwarven pickaxes break when giant marsupials catch the blade of the kangaroo slayer dingo man. Uh, I don't think kangaroo slayer is one word, but I'll let you have it. Magma cats. All caught up. If you would like to take part in that, there's a room on my Discord called the Add a Word Stories Ring, where you can add one word at a time to basically play telephone on Discord. If you would like, if that sounds entertaining or fun to you, uh, if you play telephone on Discord, then you can make me read it once or every two hours or so. Of course, if you just write a string of curse words, I will not read it, but. Oh, you need, you want to fight. Baka Glass wants to fight. That's just funny. Did they already return? Wow, that was quick. We see evaporation was looted. Uh, Buck and the Raptor. What do you think Buck and the Raptor is about, chat? Use ramps and no stairs. You know, if I build a, se a series of ramps over Thinking Rich, chat asks me why I never use stairs. And if I don't ever, if I don't ever build a series of ramps, someone will inevitably ask me why I don't ever use ramps. I can't win. There's stairs in this fort and ramps in this fort. Watch for 10 minutes and look around, and you'll see the stairs. <laughs> I'm just simply using ramps because I like to use both. It's it's fun to mess about with it, you know? Sounds like an episode of the 70s Buck Rogers series. <laughs> Buck Rogers and the Raptor. Uh, nothing weeps. Ooh. Not a fan of that. That's spooky. Let's keep hitting this. Actually, can I just, like, queue up, like, four or five of them? And then will they just go do them back to back? I don't actually know. We'll find out. You have a child who's really, really stressed? Oh, no! I'd, like, stare at what he needs. See if you can help him. Speaking of... Oh, no! <laughs> Kashmir feels self-pity after being away from friends for too damn long. I feel like, looking at Kashmir's current thoughts, I think I should make Kashmir into the into like a tavern keeper or something because Kashmir really wants to make Mary, um, which means when I do finally make a tavern on this layer connected to the library, obviously, and extend the library onto this layer, obviously, uh, I think that we should give Kashmir, you know, a tavern keeper's gig. He seems like the kind of dwarf that would like it.
Did I set you to load? No, that's the problem I did. All right, so now that you are set correctly, we're gonna call you boulders. So I have some magnetite sitting right here. So let's scroll down here and just smelt that magnetite. Oh yeah, true. That that's also very important. All those dwarves in uh, in wheelchairs need the need some need some way to get up the stairs or the ramps, rather. I guess. Do I have a mayor just yet? Nope, no mayor yet. Does make me wonder when the elections happen. What are you doing over here, dwarf? Or after being unable to practice a craft. Well, if you want to practice a craft, I guess I should make more gem cutters. But this is going to be the hospital. How much granite do I have? 13 blocks, not a ton. Hmm. We'll just do it this way. Uh, I have an ad break in a few seconds, so I will pause the game when it pops. Just a heads up. You won't miss anything. Or more accurately, nobody will miss anything. Mac and me where the kid rolls down the hill on a wheelchair. I have no idea what that is. I've never seen that movie. I like all these dwarves that are now stuck. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Like, you know, this one right here. You're stuck. So are you. H.H. H. Holmes style killing hotel? That's the first time I think H.H. H. Holmes has ever been mentioned in this fortress. So basically you just mean like a fortress that's just full of traps for no reason? Uh, no, not really. I'd never really thought about it, to be honest. I've always wondered if that thing actually was real. It's one of the more intriguing true crime stories I've encountered in my life, I guess. But no. No, I have not. Let's do slate for this. <laughs> With the same amounts of votes. You know, I there was a very brief period of time, said Nalf, where I had a fortress that had a two-party system. And you might be stuck in ads now. Ah, great. So point I should make a command that's just like exclamation point ads. It's like blind pauses the game and generally changes the subject when he sees ads and then pops back into the previous subject when the ads are over. Corners aren't smooth. We'll get back to it and do that after, Francisco. It is actually like, I'm just, I figure making a hospital is a higher priority. I mean, I've done haunted fortresses. Many a haunted fortress. I've also done fortresses where, like, I, I did a fort for Halloween, which is one of my favorite forts I did last year, actually, where I just didn't memorialize a single dwarf that died. And <laughs> it was kind of funny because there was a point where that fortress just kind of hit, like, critical mass of, like, violent ghosts. Um, <laughs> where, like, Every two to five seconds, a dwarf would just randomly die. I, I, I need to do another fort like that, because it, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it, it was guaranteed death for anybody who showed up in that fort, but that was a really fun fort. <laughs> because it was just dead, 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 dead. Just constantly. Just every, like every couple seconds, uh, you just hear the little tick of a dwarf being killed. And it's like, dwarf dead, contorted in fear. A couple seconds later, dwarf has risen from the dead as a ghost. It's like, ah... Uh... And I have some, like, footage of just, like, dwarves being completely surrounded by ghosts. Like, just a dwarf running through the fort, and then there's, like, ten ghosts around them. It's like, okay, who's gonna get them? <laughs> that was a fun fort, yeah. I would also be... A, I, I wonder what that would be like to adventure through. Like... I don't know. I, 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 that, was, that was a very, very fun fort. Very memorable fort. That was wild. Yeah. No, definitely. 
actually, I know how I'm going to do this. We're going to deconstruct this. The entryway to the hospital is going to be here. This can just be windows or something. This is going to be a two-floored hospital. Is Halloween going to be interesting? Yeah, we're going to have to do something like that again. Speaking of something like that again, population is skyrocketing. I think we need to make another housing bank because that initial one is a bit full. Also, these are some marks dwarves. I'm going to um, really quick queue up a... Well, actually click this. And make a real quick cardboard... Not cardboard. A real quick um, crossbow armor squad. I don't really care what kind of armor they wear as long as they wear armor. I've got some dwarves wandering in that are like like this. Novice marks dwarves. A tier. Dreams of mastering a skill. Yeah. I should really get some marks dwarves training is what I'm trying to say. Doesn't handle stress. Well. I mean, that's fine. I mean, literally, I'm thinking for the Mark Storbs, I'll just make bone bolts. Um, I'll just get them. I'll just make bone bolts, and I will get them training with bone bolts, and we'll use bone bolts to knock them into lava. Paddle. Getting used to hand and wait, what? Still getting used to hand animation. What are you doing? Like, what would you do? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's something. I feel bad laughing at this, but that's pretty good. The door flying off is a nice touch, yes. Good lord. Because we added a new emote this morning for those of you who missed it, which is Crypt Boing, basically. Crypt Bounce. Um, and I was like, what if we named it Crypt Boeing? But I didn't actually do it. I chickened out because I'm a big old baby, I suppose. Lucar, the Bone Doctor, you also get in there. You're gonna fire bones at people. You're a trapper. You're a novice sword dwarf. Swords dwarf! So from the same place? Most people will probably think it's a leprechaun, but I honestly, that's, that's very funny. Cooler did a great job. As per usual. Alright, we did it again. So it turns out you can't tell them to go do multiple exploration missions, but you can queue them up. So I'm just going to send these two squads out together. Go out and explore a thing. Speaking of going out and explore a thing. Hey, we have a mayor. Guess who's the mayor, chat? Da, 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 da. <laughs> Not surprised at all. Not surprised at all. That never happened before? You're suddenly getting FPS spikes, but upward spikes. Oh, uh, probably what's happening is, like, your CPU is hitching. Because I find... I've, I've seen that happen before. It usually happens when, like, there's a lot of sudden... Um, slowdown that then is responded to with a sudden speed up. This can be an office and this can be a dining hall. Could just put the mayor's bedroom back here. I'm kind of tempted to do that. The mayor necromancer. I think it's kind of fitting that the mayor of the of this fort is a necromancer. I think it's kind of fitting because like. 
I don't know, we're a, we're a knowledge-based library for it. Like, I think that's kind of fitting. Migrant, oh, were you, are you keeping track, Sad? Okay, so let's do weapon racks and armor stands. Uh, copper rack. That's 51 that I wrote, not 20. I hit the wrong buttons. I mean, he's probably got more experience than most of the dwarves. And that's me being charitable. Um, polished stones. Uh, finished goods. Furniture with polished stones. Let's do that. Crust furniture with polished stones. Probably good at it? Yeah, I mean, like, that's probably why they elected him, honestly. It is probably why they elected him. In fact, I'm even going to give him two bookcases. I'm also going to give him a pedestal, because the elves were very kind to donate one to our cause by dropping it for some reason. And I will move his bedroom to here. Mostly because it'll be easier for me to quickly make these this bedroom into valuable enough for him, whereas the other one might actually take a little bit longer. You'll need to make another one. This fort is stuttering. Hmm. I'll, I'll tell you this, Creature Keepers had a similar stutter that lasted for a while, and it happened specifically whenever birds showed up on the map. So check if there's birds on the map. Because per, because their um, pathing is so complicated, it can cause, at least on my machine sometimes, has caused me some stuttering. Uh, you know what, actually? Just to make my life easier. I'm just going to put these two sleek low boots down here if we can even get to them. Okay, how's the mayor doing? Happy with dining room, not happy with office yet. Bedroom. Give you this bed cabinet, which is also kind of ironic because the mayor doesn't need to sleep. <laughs> and we're giving him a nice bed. Whoa! Uh-oh. Where pig? There pig! Crap. I'm just going to do a thing real quick. And uh, be like, everybody get in there. Especially considering the military isn't even here and it's not like they're trained. All right, I think it's time to install a guard dog chat. I love the fact that the wear pig looks like it's wearing an angry mask. Okay, it's in combat. What's it fighting with? It's by fighting with a water buffalo. Ah, it's fighting with a fishery worker. Oh! I was hoping it would fight a little bit longer with the, with the, you know, the, the, the water buffalo. Hmm. Well, it begins.
where Pig punches the fishery worker with the left hand, bruising the muscle, jamming the right false ribs through the left lung and tearing apart the left lung. The fishery worker is having trouble breathing. Let me just double check. Tax the water buffalo. Okay, so hasn't bit anybody yet. Carpenter punches it in the upper left leg with left hand, bruising the fact. Where Pig grabs the carpenter by the alpaca wool sock with its lower arm. The where Pig takes down the carpenter. He's wrestling with the carpenter, Chad. Um, he's wrestling with Rovod, I assume, who's currently reading. So Rovod standing here reading, we see evaporation, which is clearly uh, on the ground probably now. Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it is, in fact, on the ground. Um, it's a horn blend codex. Uh, the written portion consists of a 22-page guide. So imagine you're sitting there, right? POV. You're, you're sitting there in the library reading your book about evaporation, and then suddenly a giant pig appears out of nowhere, grabs you by the sock, and performs a goddamn WWE takedown on you and slams you into the ground by the sock. Anyway, the scholar then strikes the wear pig in the lower leg with a copper pick, tearing the fat, which pigs have a lot of. Uh, the wear pig then releases the grip, uh, the carpenter actually punches it uh, with her left hand, bruising the fat, and the werepig releases the grip of the werepig's lower arm on the carpenter's alpaca wool sock. The werepig attacks the scholar, but he jumps away. Um, the miner strikes the werepig in the left hoof with a copper pick, fracturing the bone. An artery has been opened by the attack, a motor nerve has been severed, and a ligament has been torn, and a tendon has been torn. The force bends the lower leg. The carpenter kicks the werepig in the right hoof with her right foot, and bruising the muscle. And the force twists the leg. How's Piggy doing? Heavy bleeding. Ooh, that's a good sign. Also, this is a gorge ditched. Where'd you come from? Venerable nations of the Psychoplian Coalition. That's a human faction. Um, member of the communion of waving. Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. And a member of that, 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 the colossal thunk something. Okay, you just got punched. I was like, uh oh, you, you got an upset thought above your head, which means you're hurt. But nope, just just got punched. So fortunately, we do have this dwarf. This is the dwarf that got their leg obliterated earlier, but they're okay now. Um, with an axe, we have this dwarf with a pickaxe who's reading the Buck and the Raptor. Honestly, I think Ghana Tank here uh, being a legendary miner is probably a good sign. Let's see. Um, let's unpause. Uh, the werepig falls over after taking a hit from the carpenter because they kicked it in the right hoof, bruising the muscle. The force twists the right lower leg. The werepig then falls over. The fishery worker then punches the werepig in the upper body with her left hand, bruising the fat, and the werepig grabs the miner by the left upper arm by the right hand. The werepig then releases the grip of the right of the werepig's right hand from the miner's right upper arm. It's a good thing this werepig is so dedicated to the art of wrestling. Uh, the fishery worker then punches the werepig in the lower body with the right hand, bruising the fat. The force twists the upper arm, bruising the skin. The werepig then attacks the scholar, but he jumps away. I'm sorry, what is this image? Oh, I see. It lost its hand. There's a hand flying off. I was like, what is going on in front of you? Um, so it's lost a hand. Uh, Freeways is the one who jumped out of the way, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it attacked Freeways twice, and Freeways has jumped out of the way twice now. Who says, I'm terrified while in conflict. I read the Gristle and Comets. It's very interesting, says... Um, you. Anyway, so Freeways, I would just like to point out for a second here. Um, he felt lonely after being away from family, understandable, but also was bored after leading an unexciting life for too long. Can we just agree here for a second, chat room, that this is probably going to quell that need? Because honestly, I think this dwarf is now leading an exciting life. <laughs> Um, the scholar attacks the werepig by with the right hand of the copper pick, and it sails off in an arc. So shout us to um, not the not not freeways, but just different scholar. Um, I'm gonna click this button again. I'm gonna unpause. The scholar strikes the werepig in the lower leg with the copper pick, fracturing the bone, broken leg. A ligament has been torn, and the tendon has been torn. Uh, the force pulls the right upper leg. What's up, Clino? Uh, the werepig attacks the scholar, but he jumps away. The scholar strikes the werepig in the lower body with a copper pick, uh, tearing the muscle and tearing the guts. The copper pick um, has been firmly lodged in the wound. I'm just going to do a thing real quick. Just, 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 just for, for future safety's sake. Um, and then I'm going to pause again. Uh, the werepig grabs the scholar by the right upper arm with its right upper arm. And the gem setter punches the werepig in the right hoof with her right hand, tearing, bruising the muscle. And the fishery worker scratches the werepig. Staring the fat. Werepig locks the scholar's right hip with the werepig's right upper arm. 
And Oka the Werepig says, I was attacked. Most shocking. Really, why is this shocking to you exactly, Mr. Werepig? Or Mrs. Werepig. I actually haven't looked. Unknown. Currently, some sort of werepig. Um, its hand is flying. It's bleeding heavily. Uh, its ability to stand lost grass blossom and motor mutt nerve damage. Its left hand is gone, obviously. Uh, and up, uh, clearly it's a pig twisted into humanoid form. I think we know that. It's covered in its own blood. Um, it worships Baal. Well, hmm. <laughs> it also worships Lelgo. It's like rip-off Lego. Not telling me about any kills. Click this button again. The werepig bends the, the scholar's upper leg with the werepig's right upper arm and the right hip collapses. Ooh! Ow! WWE werepig cage match. On pay-per-view! Or whatever. Um, so this is a carpenter and it punches the werepig in the lower leg, bruising the muscle. They haven't hit it with a chair yet, so I guess they're kind of failing in that regard. The scholar then scratches the werepig in the lower leg, tearing the fat and bruising the muscle. If this thing bites anybody, they're dead. So, so far, so good. Uh, the gem setter then punches the werepig in the left lower arm, bruising their or left hand and bruising the muscle. Uh, the fishery worker punches the werepig in the upper body with her uh, right hand, bruising the fat. Uh, the werepig then bites the scholar. I'm sorry, freeways. I'm sorry. You know, Freeways, I know you've been bit. But how about this? How about we lock you in the uppermost floor in here? You get to live up here. And you can... I, I, I don't know. Exist up there? Maybe? It's always you. Freeways, always. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, the, 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 this, this creature is still bleeding heavily. Nobody else is bleeding, although I, th I I, think you you got, yeah, because you got your leg broken. If you hadn't had your leg broken, well, you are interested in remembering reading Buck and the Raptor, though. So, I guess that's good. The carpenter that punches the werepig in the lower, ar lower arm with her right hand, bruising the muscle. Oh my god. Uh, Miner strikes the werepig. A ligament has been torn. Force bends the right upper arm. Werepig releases the joint lock on the scholar's upper leg, finally, after biting the scholar, right? Um, Werepig releases the Werepig's uh, right uh, upper arm on the scholar's right upper leg. Werepig misses the minor. Gem setter uh, punches the Werepig. Uh, the Werepig bites the scholar. Double checking, it's the same scholar. Got bit a second time. Heavy bleeding. Still pondering migratory patterns. Terrified. Our time in the realm of destiny is so brief. I must not succumb to fear, you say. And honestly, fair. Scholar punches back. Well, at least you're still fighting. Werepig misses. The werepig attacks, but Scholar scrambles away. So you've moved over to here now. You're bleeding and in pain. Many other dwarves are surrounding the creature. Gonatank is kind of one of the, the big leads here the ex-lover of uh, Big Bang who died. Carpenter punches the werepig. Werepig attacks the miner but misses. Miner strikes the werepig in the lower body with her copper pick, tearing the muscle and tearing the guts. An artery has been opened and the gem setter punches the werepig with her left hand but the attack glances away. The creature is still bleeding heavily. Very close to the end of autumn. Double KO? No, just single dwarf. Or are you saying they're both going to die? Uh, no, I think I think Freeways is going to survive. I think. Don't quote me on that. Uh, gem Setter punches it. Yes, okay. Um, gem Setter punches the Werepig in the lower body. Mason punches. Bruising the fat. Werepig grabs the Miner by the right hand with his left lower arm. Werepig says, I've been injured badly. This leaves me so shaken. Probably then some oink in there somewhere. The werepig locks the miner's uh, right wrist with the werepig's lower arm. 
The werepig bends the miner's, uh oh, this is bad news, uh, right low, lower arm uh, and the right wrist collapses. This is what happened before the last one was bit. The miner strikes the werepig in the lower body with a copper pick, tearing the muscle and spilling the reeking guts. It already has been opened by the attack. Werepig guts hanging out. Yeah, it was Ghana Tank here who just got their wrist broken by the creature. The werepig releases the joint lock. The werepig then bites the miner in the upper leg through the wolf leather tunic. I'm sorry, Ghana Tank. I just jinxed it. I didn't do anything. <laughs> I could have let this run at full speed and it probably would have played out the same way. The uh, gem setter punches the werepig in the upper arm with her left hand, bruising the muscle. Carpenter punches the werepig in the upper arm with her left hand, bruising the muscle. Also, I said the other dwarf was going to live. Oh, I see what you mean by a jinx. I, I get it. Okay. Um, the, the carpenter punches the werepig in the upper arm with her left hand, bruising the muscle. The miner scratches the werepig in the upper arm, uh, tearing the fat and bruising the muscle. The werepig bites the miner in the upper body. The werepig latches on firmly. Ooh. Heavy bleed. Okay, you might not live. That's pretty brutal, actually. Terrified how fragile we are, I shall not succumb to fear. Ghana Tank says, Can it all send so quickly? Begone, fear. Uh, while the were while the pig says, I've improved my fighting, and that was satisfying. The were pig shakes the miner around by the upper body, tearing apart the body's muscle. An artery in the upper body has been opened by the attack. The were pig releases the grip of the were pig's left lower arm on the miner's right hand. Scholar strikes the were pig in the lower arm with a co with his copper pick, fracturing the bone. Sensory nerve has been t severed, and a ligament has been torn, and a tendon has been torn. The carpenter then punches the werepig in the left upper arm with her right hand, bruising the fat. The werepig grabs a scholar by the cave spider silk glove with his upper leg. Peasant punches the werepig. These fights always go on for so long. <laughs> the werepig releases the grip of the werepig's upper leg on the cave spider silk's left glove. The gem setter punches the werepig. The werepig bites the gem. Fuck. Gem setter, uh, tearing apart the fat through the green devourer leather shoe. Well, there goes your wrist. <laughs> What's up, Mouse Peter? We have a wear pick. Chat, can I get a. Round of beers for good luck for the remaining dwarves. I've improved my wrestling. That was satisfying, says the werepig. The scholar strikes the werepig in the left lower arm with a copper pick tearing the muscle. Remember, the werepig's guts are hanging out. Um, the gem setter punches the werepig in the lower arm with her right hand, bruising the fat. The fishery worker punches the werepig in the left lower arm with, her right, with his right hand, but the attack glances away. The werepig shakes the gem setter around by the third toe and the severed part sails off in an arc. Where pig attacks the mason but she jumps away after the scholar strikes the mason again with the copper pick. The peasant then punches the were pig in the left upper leg with her left hand bruising the muscle. Gem setter punches the were pig in the left hoof with her left with her left hand but the attack glances away. Carpenter attacks the were pig but it rolls away. Werepig grabs a scholar by the throat. Beg your pardon. So I think Ghana Tank is dead. Um, I'm seeing if there's other scholars here. It's just the gem setter. So Freeways is being grabbed by the throat. <laughs> Freeways is being grabbed by the throat. Okay. Um, I don't actually know. I, I don't believe I've ever seen a, um, a werebeast get its guts spilled that didn't die mid-fight, so I'm not sure. I feel like they would regenerate if they made it to the end of the full moon, but... They also, like, don't get tired and have massive, like, combat bonuses, so... 
Diagnoser punches the pig in the right upper arm with his left hand, but the attack glances away. Oh, boy. Places a chokehold on the scholar's throat with his upper arm. Man, he's strangling Freeways. Meanwhile, Freeways is still pondering migratory patterns. <laughs> he's still pondering migratory. He's just sitting here pondering. He's choking you, and you're just like, I shall think till my death. It's okay. You're still interested in remembering reading the last book that you read. Uh, the were pig placed a chokehold on his upper, uh, on his right upper. Sorry, not on his on his throat with his right upper arm. Yeah, there you go. He's strangling him in the throat, and the scholar passes out. He's still strangling you. He's still strangling you. He's pale and bleeding, shaken. Very proud of his wrestling ability. I refuse to believe that this isn't like a legendary wrestler. Like. <laughs> This thing's wrestling skills are actually kind of rad. <laughs> uh, strangling diagnoser punches him, bruising the muscle. Peasant bites the werepig. Dude! <laughs> to, to peep, giving him a piece of his own medicine. Latches on firmly. The werepig breaks the grip of the peasant's uh, teeth on the werepig's hoof. The werepig attacks the peasant, but she jumps away. The diagnoser attacks the werepig with, her lower, uh, with the right lower leg. In the right lower leg, uh, uh, with his left foot bruising the skin. Carpenter punches. Peasant punches. God, this is such a long fight. The werepig lets Eurist's third toe drop away as it attacks because he bit his toe off a while ago. And then uh, the werepig bites the peasant in the lower body, tearing the muscle and bruising the stomach. Who's the peasant? Moses. Who's reading, give me the town. Uh-huh. That's four, I think. Also, uh, Freeways is dead, by the way. Rest in peace, Freeways. The dwarves haven't even noticed yet. That's how little time has passed. Um, Ghana Tank is probably dead. Let's keep following this thing. Our pig bites the peasant. Diagnoser punches. Our pig attacks the mason. Carpenter punches the were pig. Peasant latches on firmly after biting. Were pig breaks the grip of the peasant's upper front teeth. Nope, oh, no longer biting. Freeways uh, has been found dead. Surprise. Uh, were pig grabs the peasant by the upper left upper by with with the hmm, by the pigtail shoe, but with his upper left leg and. Uh, Takes the peasant down by the pigtail shoe. I don't know. Okay. Well, I, I'd love to see this, like, in real life actually happening. Because this is a wild fight. Uh, the carpenter punches the, the werepig in the upper arm with her right hand, bruising the muscle. Werepig uh, releases the grip of the upper arm uh, on the peasant's right pigtail shoe. Werepig attacks the peasant, but she jumps away. I mean, she's been bit. And the werepig is dead. Who got the kill? Did nobody get credited with the kill? Damn. Diagnoser hit them last. But the attack glanced away, so... No one's a military dwarf in here. So... This came in at an angle I wasn't expecting. I was expecting that we would have seen it before it got to us. But, uh, yeah. That's unfortunate. Creature is dead. So. I have two living bit dwarves. I have Moses. I've got a tank. Is there not another one, or am I going crazy? Ah, I see I've entered some. Fun. Where did Eurist go? Oh, I guess Eurist bit died. Not seeing her body, though. Okay. There's your... Uh... Well, his toe's there. <laughs> I'm assuming died on the way out or something. Okay, 
Let's just let the game run for a sec. Hmm. So Ghana Tank. You are the only two that We didn't get named. I mean, they were Eurus the peasant, right? Or maybe it was you. Hold on. Yep, it was you. I thought I renamed your your last name to Bit. Okay. Hum. Zealousor, thank you very much for the 27th month. What killed it? Uh, blood loss. None of them killed it. Unless, like, I don't know, fucking Peacock got credited with it or something, which it didn't. So, hmm. So I don't currently have a hospital. Make two. Actually, hold on. I need three new three squads with one dwarf each. Say, hold on. How many extra floats do I have? One, two, three. Is that dwarf in the top right bit? This one. Uh, no, just got punched. Got got a pretty bad bruise in the lung, basically. So what I'm thinking about doing is going up to here, making a new squad. No uniform. And naming a dwarf. Or giving it to, let's just say, Eurist. Eurist, you go stand right here. I don't currently have a hospital, so um, I'm also going to go here and I'm going to make a uh, hatch cover, or rock hatch covers three of them, or actually copper ha hatch cover. We'll do three of them. Those will be done the quickest. Nerev, can you give me a sec? Just let me get all this dealt with and then we'll we'll worry about that. Um, the next one I want to go to is new militia captain, my uniform. Moses. Also, we're in an ad break real quick, so I will just wait. So the idea here is to get all of these dwarves distributed, sealed off, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do with them afterwards. That was wild. Yeah, no kidding. We'll see you later, Kazoom. Take care. How you doing, Zalazar? How's things? But yeah, no one has a weapon because we're trying to not be a combat-oriented fort. Basically, I'm going to try and kill things with the volcano instead of fighting things directly. Because my last few forts have been very direct combat-focused. So this fort is more stealing things and, you know, espionage, if you will. Freeways very likely could have gotten the kill, John Reese, but we'll never know. But uh, this will actually make it a lot easier for me to make this place defended. Now that uh, I know that there is were creatures in the vicinity. We'll keep that. All right, so now that that's done, these two. Let's make a new one. No, no uniform, and this is gonna all go to Ghana Tank, who's the last bit dwarf. 
and Ghana Tank, you should go stand right here. I don't currently actually have a hospital. Oh, come on. That's cheating. You're not allowed to go to the hospital. No going to the hospital. I refuse. At least you're behaving. So I need you to go queue those jobs up after you get your drink. Go get your sippy cup and then go queue those jobs up. Should appear in here in a moment. There you are. I'm actually just really happy that um, the necromancer wasn't in the middle of all of that. Because if my mayor was, we actually probably would be in a lot of trouble. Okay, so... Worst case scenario, I'll just have to lock them both in here. You guys need traction? Is that the problem? Wow. You need traction? No. Okay. Well, on the bright side, I guess I don't. I guess I don't have a traction bench to place there just yet. If we were, uh, no, he would have raised you as a undead, um, were creature, which, by the way, are almost invincible. Why are you on the outside? You have one job. Go stand on the inside, you doof. In there. Don't make me have to, like, seal all three of you in here. Because I will. Have to had any fun. I don't understand the question, GTB. Okay, you're standing up there. Let's just cancel this one. Go up to here. Dear Dwarf, can you quit being an ass and please move to the left? Thank you. It's one done. It's one down. We're just waiting on this. Sorry, what did I not make one for clockworks? Oh, I did. What? I'm, now I'm confused. Whatever. Uh, let's get rid of this and then lock this off. And you can, your squad can be deleted, which is the Mountains of Conjuring. Now I got to put one right here because this should be the last one. Yep. And uh, tell you to go stand right here. It's the game music. What do you mean? That I'm getting a lot more than you are. You mean like uh, you're getting a lot more music? Or I'm getting a lot more music? Uh, if you go to the audio settings, you can set the frequency. I think by default, it's like 60 or something. Like there's a lot of silence by default, but if you set it down, then there's a maximum of 10 seconds between each, each track. I'm not sure why that setting is there. It's one of the odder decisions in this version as far as I'm concerned. Like we have all this really cool music and 
you are doing your best to play as little of it as possible. I don't, I don't get it. But you need setting and dressing. Huh. Yeah, I, I have no interest. I mean, same thing. I, I, I don't particularly like the... Uh, I mean, it's it's the reason that whenever chat's like, Blind, do a... Uh, Fucking... Um, do, do a... Reclaim for it. And I'm always like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> kind of hard pass, not gonna lie. Because, like, I feel basically the same. So if you're asking, do I like them? No. <laughs> if that was the question. No, I do not particularly like them. Also, yes, Neo Kai, you just missed him. Okay, are you running around? Yes, you are. Sweet. Done. And done. All right, so I'm not entirely sure what I can do with these dwarves. I mean, I guess I will get them to smooth their own area and we'll figure it out from there. But for right now, at the very least, we have them all locked up. Not gonna lie, that shit's stressful when this stuff happens. The wear pig addict, yeah, it's kind of the wear pig. It's kind of the wear pig, pig addict, attic, not addict. As for um, freeways, well, freeways can get a tomb. Wear bacon? No, it's a it's an intelligent creature. That would be like breaking all of dwarven law. Dwarves do not eat intelligent creatures, regardless of how demonic they might be, or how cursed they might be. So, no, I cannot butcher it, if that's what you're asking me to do. And even if I could, no, I wouldn't. Now, that, that thing's going to, um... get thrown into the volcano. To put it simply. Let's make it out of slate. Keep them the same color. And you, creature right here, can get thrown into the goddamn volcano. And now we find out if I actually got them all. I don't know, I think it's a fair assumption. It is a pig, but. Still doesn't change the fact that it's terrifying. So now we get to find out for mindless monsters? Nope, I mean, they still talk, right? But just because something is a mindless monster while transformed doesn't mean it's going to be a mindless monster once it's, like... Doesn't mean... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I still wouldn't eat them. <laughs> I guess that's, like, the... At that point, you're just, like, arguing semantics, but... No, I, I would not go anywhere near that. Holy shit, that thing is heavy. And I need to make more booze for my dwarfs. Also, I like that you're implying that pigs are mindless creatures. Pigs are smarter than most dogs. Mostly because I've met some real dumb dogs. Also, that's funny. <laughs> throwing it the wrong way. Guy, you're supposed to throw it the other way off the cliff. Okay, well, if you insist... If you insist. Mm. 
Yeah, would you eat meat of a cursed creature? I know I wouldn't. You're like eating spoiled meat. Uh, what's the setting? Uh, tasks, places, labor, standby orders, hauling, uh, refuse and dumping. There we go. Hey, Salva Daddy. How's was things. Have a wear monitor goblin bard who stayed and watched plays twice in your tavern. You know what's funny? Is you are gambling with death there because they keep doing whatever the last task they were doing. So if they're actively socializing, they'll continue socializing until they finish socializing. They will watch the play until the play is over. But the second the play is over, they will start gutting the nearest dwarf that is standing there. So you are gambling with your fort when you let them do that. Also, if you just happen to have a soldier who's on duty, who's in the room, they will just attack them. So, which will also cause the job to cancel. Pray for a long play. Yep. Yep. You got to hope that it's like, I, I don't know, um, Wagner's ripoff of Lord of the Rings or something. Or wait, was Wagner before Lord of the Rings? Shit, I can't remember. <laughs> I was just trying to think of a long play that I knew the name of. And I was like, well, that's the first thing that came to mind, so... Um, let's just do a little plank here. So I'll probably just throw it backwards. Also a bunch of skeletons right there. Fun. Had a moose wipe a fort a few days ago. Yep. They're still not supposed to wander into taverns. That is still a bug, as far as I know, anyway. Let's fly down. Let's see if I have another tomb just yet. Yes, I do. I can assign this. We can hopefully sort out our general moods now. And we also get to find out if I did, in fact, find all of the bit dwarves. Oh, hey, at the very least, you know you're smoothing your floors. Uh, it's a little smelly in here. That's unfortunate. Hauling freeways down here while I watch the moon. Come on. Bard watches Guy play in the front row, spontaneously transforms into a werewolf and continues listening. Bard freak frantically begins to improvise for the next few hours. The next, like, 12 hours. It's the next whole day. You have to keep them entranced. That is, like, a really good, actually, like, D&D bit or something. I need to get brew skis going. Let's queue up a hundred so I don't run out. I don't care about cancellations really. Let's watch the piggy get thrown out. Okay, it is just the three of them. One, two, three. Sweet. Good. Done. Got him. Excellent. All right. Well, I guess we don't need these stairs up anymore. And we get to watch this creature get thrown into the volcano. Where did all, did they all come from one werepig? Where did all those pigs come from? Oh, I see where you're going with that. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a second to even realize that there was a pun happening. Cole gets to do the honors. And there it goes.
Can I get, like, I don't know, Vile Force of Darkness as we watch this creature sink? Goodbye, you stupid creature. I really hope that they positioned its thumb pointing up before they threw it in. It's pretty badass, if you ask me. Rest in peace, dwarves. All right, so how are we doing on books now? We got 17 books, including copies. All right, let's go get another set. Oh, wow, we actually got all of them. Eh, that's kind of funny. Okay, so we got all of the books that were at that particular spot. Let's go somewhere else. We must find somewhere that has no population but does, in fact, have books. Like this. Yep, you just have to make sure that there is a single... Uh, you just need to make a, a dump zone with a single tile over over lava. So this is a garbage dump zone right here. But because they, they stand here and throw it this way, right? So if there is, like, one on a ledge, they'll throw it off of an edge. They will stand on it and put it next to them somewhere. So they will try and put it here, or they'll put it here, or they'll put it here, basically. They won't put it here. Um, so they'll throw it off the ledge from up there. You can also do that with animals by making a pit pond, and, or prisoners even, and then scrolling down through this list and then just assigning random animal. I, obviously the birds would probably, I don't know why I have a bunch of tame chipmunks and shit, but like, you know, I could throw a reindeer calf in here, for example, which would be mean, so I'm not gonna do that. But I do realize suddenly I have a bunch of animals I didn't know I had, so I should probably assign them down here. And also, same with all of the pigs. And I guess probably the dog as well. So, I think we're going to need a pig dar or a ham radio or something to keep an eye on the outside of this map because clearly it's not as safe as I thought it would be. Um, so, I get to figure out where I'm going to put that. Probably up here, maybe? Good spot to spot things. That or, you know, I have a, I have a plan that's probably sufficient. What if I... Two more doors in. What's underneath this? Granite? Okay. Um, I put a door here and a door here. And then cut holes in the floor here. And put bars on the floor. They'd be able to see down and in there. That would probably do it. Also, speaking of, we've got snatchers apparently. I think we need to accelerate our defenses. I thought this was next week. Uh, it's this week, apparently. Also, my dwarves have arrived back. Uh, we looted a bunch more booksies. Let's go get some more booksies. Okay, well, there's only three left there, so we'll go get those three. This is a castle of Pear Dagger, which has two books. It says one. Against the market, they also don't like capitalism. No civilized population there. We hit that one. So, we're going to jump down into the fort, and we're going to go over here. Currently, we have these two things. We're going to just start rapidly expanding this. And let's actually remove this, but they can just bring more stuff over here. And I'm going to exclaim, why in the world are you not working? Oh. Pfft. I'm dumb. Start getting this stuff filled. This will speed this process up significantly. Significantly, I'm telling you. God, that's such a weird sound. Somebody has either a vibrator, some weird electronic device, 
or a phone, and they leave it on the floor. And they have hardwood floors directly above me. And around this time, almost every day, I hear buzzing. And I think my phone is vibrating. I'm like, what the fuck is that sound? Every time. Every goddamn time. Every day around the same time. And then I look, and then I'm, I realize, oh, it's coming from above. It's like on a dresser or something. <sighs> it's definitely a vibrator. I fucking hope it's a vibrator. Could be, a, could be a cat toy. Could definitely be a cat toy. It's just an annoying sound. It's, you know, part, part of the pain of living in an apartment. It could be an alarm clock. It could be a phone alarm clock. It, it could be any number. It doesn't last that long, so it's probably not a vibrator. But it's it's that kind of buzzing sound. And it's like, always, what the hell is that sound? Has Lava Mist been splashed yet? Um, sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. Why not? If that's a viper, it's a big boy. That's one way to refer to it. It's an electric cauliflower trimmer. What? <laughs> the fuck is an electric cauliflower trimmer? <laughs> Is that what we call it now? It's like, is that an electric cauliflower trimmer or are you just happy to see me? All right, so I need to decide how I want it or how I want to build a big old lava drowner. Because we're gonna start getting attacked soon. Speaking of getting attacked, how's my mayor feeling? One weapon rack. Don't have enough weapon racks? Gonna say, oh, I see the problem. All right, where's my mayor? No longer your bedroom, dude. I have a feeling you're gonna have a very, 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 very long reign because you are immortal. So, I'll go to your quarters and delete them from your owner ownership because you don't need those. Cashmere can have them. You, however, can have this. There you go. Now you just need your office to be slightly nicer. Vampiric mayor? No, he's a he's a necromancer. Fortunately, is no vampire, but is in fact necromancer. You know what? What if your office was just bigger than the room? No one says that your office can't just be bigger than the room. I mean, if I make your office bigger than the room, that'll make you happier, right? Right? And then I can put fancy floor outside, and that'll make you happier, right? Right? If I say this louder, will it make you happy or ish? I'll even give you two copper tiles. You better like those. What do you still want, Mary? I want another chest, you goddamn needy son of a bitch. That's not a bug. It's likely Parkside. If you're if you're not getting traders, it likely means that um, your relations with them are either too low or there is something stopping them from getting you. Meaning, uh, there's a siege, there's a war happening, a war started, uh, something happened, and thus you they don't have the ability of getting to you. It's almost always the reason. The game doesn't just bug and then you stop getting traders. That's not really how the game works. As much as people like to blame bugs in this game on everything, there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood that is out of your control and also almost impossible to find unless you either A, have adventure mode, or B, look in Legends. And everybody always just blames it on a bug. So I, I'm i genuinely, like... I know this might be a weird take <laughs> to some people, but a lot of the things that people claim are bugs in this game are player error. Not actually bugs. All right, so do I have traction benches? No. Okay, well, why not? Actually, it might be because I don't have... Um, I may have destroyed my mechanic shop, did I? Nope. I did. It is, in fact, the problem.
Oh, it's absolutely a lack of... It's either... It's a mix of the two, usually. It's either player error or poor communication by the game mixed with player error. But I guess it also depends on what you define as player error. I would I would describe the player describing a bug as player error as... Or I would describe a bug that players... Or I would describe a thing in game that players assume is a bug as player error because you shouldn't assume everything automatically is a bug. Because then you don't go out of your way to try and fix it. If you assume it's the game that's fucking up and not something that you could figure out yourself, then what is your reason to go, like, figure out the cause of it and fix it? If you need specifically military people, can you do that adventure mode thing? What do you mean? You need specifically military... Uh, I mean, yeah, if you, if you need, like, if you want to, like, get some extraordinarily talented, talented military dwarves into your fort extremely quickly, one of the best ways to do that is to just go into adventure mode, train, like, make a bunch of demigods, and then just walk them to your fort and retire them. And then suddenly you have a squad of ten demigods, which are all legendary skills. Yeah, you can do that. In fact, I've done that. <laughs> we'll see you later, Protolore. Oh, cheers, man. We're making progress. We're in fact making progress. We also lost a bunch of dwarves, and now they're pigs. And where are they, you might ask? Pigs, obviously. Makes me wonder if I actually have any gems I can cut. Nope, not currently. I wouldn't say that that's cheating. I'd say that that's an intended feature of adventure mode, um, is walking dwarves that you would like in your fort into your fort that way. Still haven't queued up those rock blocks, and it's really vexing. I'm just gonna delete the slate the slate job blocks job and re queue up just any rock blocks. Yeah, I mean no, that that's literally how you're one of the ways that you're supposed to use adventure mode. So this may also me running around stealing all these books may also start a bunch of wars, coincidentally, but so okay, I'm not super bothered by that. Got an ad in progress. So I'll just wait. Find a spot to send the soldiers out to and then wait. If I find like a kobold town or something, we could just go beat them up and take their stuff. Bird trampled. We'll send one out there. Standard banner. Ooh. Bigger one. Oh, it's been pretty good, Pantoma. Name tried to kill me briefly, but it's okay. We caught by. Books and artifacts, artifacts and books, yes. Your entire fort run into where's lists. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, that sounds horrific. A rare are cave dragons. They only show up in the third cavern layer. Um, but uh once you're playing on the experimental branch, you should be able to get them from goblins. Reading pair of rhinos from Elven Traders. Ooh. But uh, how tamer how rare are they? They are a relatively rare third cavern layer creature. I think uh Wild ones, I've seen maybe a dozen in my entire time playing, and I'd never caught one. And I've never caught one, but I have stolen them from goblins. So now I just need to go here and requeue up those rock blocks. Which they're not queued up just yet, but they will be in a moment.
Uh, have you raided any goblin fortresses? But I guarantee you they've spawned. They're one of those things that are in every world. They're just really hard to find. Unless you know where to look. And turns out there's a lot of things like that in Dwarf Fortress where they're really hard to find unless you happen to know where to look. Been trying to find the rarer goblin animals? Gotcha. Uh, you, I miss, I, pardon my dumb question. You did upgrade to the experimental branch, yeah? Library of Tomes, we will extend to down here. Okay, just, just check. But uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, I I wouldn't say that they haven't spawned. I guarantee you they they are somewhere. It's just a matter of whether or not the goblins were able to tame them. But uh, question: When you're sieging the goblins, do you specifically set your missions to look like this? Uh, I'm not actually going to go through with this mission, but just click a random one. Steal livestock only on raid. Have you tried doing specifically that? Because otherwise, I almost guarantee you, you're not going to do that. You're not going to find anything. Because they prioritize literally every other thing above this, including looting items. You do loot important stuff too. Do not do loot and take important treasures. Literally, if you want to get if you want to get big animals, just steal livestock. That'll give you higher luck. Or high, a higher chance of succeeding. All right, well, these dwarves are very sad, but... The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find... Oh, man, you have no clothes. I feel so bad for you. I'm going to jump to your old bedroom and be like, well, unfortunately, you don't need this anymore. A baby can have your bedroom, Dorf. A literal baby. We're on year, like, good chunk of the way through year two, if not most of the way through year two. I haven't made a tavern yet. I'm about to make an area that's going to become a tavern, but I still don't actually have a tavern yet. But before I do that, we're going to set up a guard pig. The very important anti-enemy defense pig. Question is, where am I going to put it exactly? Probably right here. Guard pig go herezies. This is uh, going to be the home of the ham radio. The return of the grand squeak of the of the grand oink. They don't squeak. They oink, right? So the return of the oink. Captain Hammy. Most important. Piggy in the fort. Uh, yes, we got attacked by were pigs, and these three dwarves got uh, completely infected. Of the coink, the key, can't can't re return of the oh, return of the king, right? Uh, return of the pig. Speaking of things that need to be removed, this boulder is in a bad place. Let's get rid of that. I'm sorry, what? Why can't you get to that? Oh, I see, because that actually goes too far down. It's kind of funny. And also, let's mine through this. Speaking of miners, where are all my miners? Oh. Got a tank, you shouldn't be mining. But I do need to assign more miners again. It turns out a lot of my miners um, are very unfortunately no longer with us. Uh, if they've been bit, they are infected. And then there is absolutely no getting around. They are a thousand percent dead. Don't get sad. Don't worry about them. They are a were creature. And you know you can't cure it. So it's just kind of a, well, shit <laughs> kind of deal. So 
This is all Gabaro. Place a Gabaro fortification right here. Yeah, basically stare at the where creatures combat log and move up one turn at a time. And whenever a dwarf is bit, you essentially just... I just give them a nickname is the way I do it, but you can do it however you want. Uh, I just give them a nickname, and then once they're nicknamed, then I take note of it. And then you have a month, basically, to either get them out of your fort or get them quarantined. Doing all right, Rick Maru, and yourself. Sucks to be this dwarf who lives right below the guard pig. It's probably the cheapest, like, work requirement to have this apartment because, like, it's not rent, right? And these fortifications, the pig will be able to see through. Now we just need to wait for these boulders to come up. And then I can park a pig in here. No, you don't charge for rooms, which is why it was like work requirements. That's why I walked that statement back pretty quick. If <laughs> dwarf moods depended on their location, a uh, noise might come back one day. Which would mean bedrooms near workshops will be a bad idea all of a sudden. The thing is, you kind of can't do that, draw chill, because infected dwarves kill each other. So it's... Chat, I have a question. I realize that guard dog is much more logical, but guard dog or guard pig? What what do? I've got pupper, single singular pupper, and I got several piggies. Guard pig or guard dog? Pig? Okay. Ham radio? Alright. The return of the meme, the ham radio. Captain Hammy. Oh, true. The, the were pig will definitely know when a were pig. The, the pig will know when a were pig is coming. And he's going to sit there and scream, There! We'll be like, Where? And they'll be like, There! <laughs> is there. There is a mod. Uh... Remove bids from agitated animals. Thanks, comrade Dusty. I have no idea what you're talking about. You mean like names so that they can't be butchered? You can butcher named animals. What do you need to remove from agitated animals? Very confused. And if you mean like disable agitated animals, why don't you just disable that in the options instead of installing some stupid mod? The amount of unnecessary mods that exist for this game are kind of hysterical in my opinion. Like, I've had people be like, oh, there's a mod for that. It's like, literally, that is just a feature of the video game. You just need to change a setting. Like, if I had a dollar for every time I found a mod for this game that just already existed in the settings, I would have, like, I don't know, 50 bucks. What? <laughs> there's just, like, stairs there that lead nowhere. I'm confused. Why do I have stairs that go to nowhere? Like, literally, they, they don't go anywhere. Alright, well, here's hoping that uh, Guard Pig does his job effectively. We'll put another Guard Piggy over here. How do you lose just an eyelid? You should ask the person who lost the eyelid. The gem setter has been possessed. You know, chat, word and word in these parts have told me that gems are 
truly outrageous. Truly, truly outrageous. All right. You'll have stairs to know where you saw them on Warp Tour. That's a thing I haven't thought about in a second. We will check in on that artifact in a moment. All right, let's get that done. Oh, wow, that was quick. Burf has begun a mysterious construction. Literally just grabbed rough almondines. It's a possession, so. Be a perfect something, not a, uh, nothing more than that, though. All right, let's get this tavern done, and then we're going to go work on our defenses. And by done, I mean let's just throw some tables and chairs in here. And a um, couple more bookshelves. And let's put two chests in here. Check if I have any constructible musical instruments. Maybe some gem windows? Nope. Don't have enough gems to do that. Nope, don't have any, uh, any of those things. All right, well, we'll let that exist. And uh, you can be a tavern. But it's not going to be public just yet. And I think I'm going to make... That is weird. You can see more skills at the bottom. That seems like a bug. Or at least a UI issue. Um, okay, so Ushuri the gem setter has created Nagalakmaz, a perfect almondine, and offers it to the living fire. Uh, Darius is going to be my tavern keeper, I think. Not that they'll have much to do initially, but we'll have stuff to do for them eventually. We're going to go right here and just be all like, yo, yo, dwarfs, take some brewed drinks and some prepared meals. Put those there, please. And let's see, did they ever make those action benches? Ah, yes, they did. Couldn't seem to connect staircases. I never fully, uh, I, I can't, I never fully figured out why people were having so much trouble connecting staircases in this version. Like, it was annoying the first time I tried to do it, but by the second time, I was like, okay, I understand how this works. But. It seems to be one of the things that people struggle with the most with the control change. But I guess stairs are just complicated in this game. Because imagining in three dimensions when looking at a 2D plane is difficult. I think that's most of it. So that should hopefully give us a better, more consistent defense. At least you're getting the opportunity to, you know make nice spots on. Oh, no. At least you're interested near a fine floor hatch. That's a shame. The new read New Ithili Eagle Orb. It's clearly a book about a person. How many books do we have in this library now? Let's find out. 35. Not bad. Both the squads have returned. Not bad. Got more stuff. Got more stuff. And the last of that stuff. Um, let's see. Where was that uh, fortress that was down here somewhere that was abandoned that was full of stuff? I could also go raid my old fort. <laughs> well, although that's ad admittedly quite a bit further. Ooh. Seer Orb. Well, we're sending both of them. There's so much stuff in Seer Orb. Seer Orb, Feeler Orb, Beer Orb. 
We're definitely going for all these. Oh, human locations and goblin locations. Look at that. The cruel dies. Uh, I haven't looked into it too too closely, to be honest with you. Um, so let's let's check. Aren't those listed in objects? Written content. Okay. Um, this is a screen I almost never used. Truth, Cloudy. It must have been showers. Elf the truth. Nothing will tell. Uh, I think truth uh, and lies. Uh, Buck and the Raptor, which is possibly my favorite title. Uh, it all begins with the mountain halls. Give me the town. Uh, an exploration of the town. Birth of rusts. And they sang spurn. All right. Mysteries of the genius. Composition and beyond. Nothing weeps. We see evaporation. The gristle and comets. Mountain home in the modern era. Uh, the Book of the Group, uh, The Nuanced Elves, New Ithithi Eagle Orb, uh, Reflections of on the Abbot, Monastery Explained. That's just a YouTube video. That's a YouTube video title. Monasteries Explained! Uh, musings on Bird ramble, Rambled, uh, Records of Thigh Cut, uh, Misty Ocher in My Life, Thigh Cut, Come full circle. Discovering storage. Uh, the monastery might help. Of the monastery. Storage questioned. Uh, rec this, this storage questioned. This, whoever wrote this discovered quantum stockpiling. Uh, genius come full circle. And recluse works a brief history. The monastery explained? No, I didn't. Although I'm not sure if that's a joke or not. <laughs> No, I did not, in fact, make a video titled The Monastery Explained. All right, well, the dwarves can finally, after two years, potentially, of living here, dance in my tavern. And guess what, chat? It's already that time. At least I'm pretty certain it is. It is. I haven't heard this song since two forts ago. Time to dance or fall or something. Jack, can I get your, your, your favorite dancing emote now? Go. We have a drums emote just for this thing. I like how all the dwarves have left the tavern. The song's still playing. Alright, so I don't know how to... not feel terrible for these dwarves, so I will give them each three separate meeting zone tiles. This one will be connected to... I just realized I accidentally made two, two hospitals. That's fine. Uh, one's going to be connected to the library. One's going to be connected to the temple. And one's going to be connected to the tavern. And let's see if they actually... If this improves their mood. Because I don't really know how to make them happy. You missed something? Oh, I've got three wear picks. Um, are you talking about cave dragons? Because cave dragons are not trained dragons. Cave dragons are a different type of creature. Ca cave, blah, blah. cave dragons are not... Um, don't they starve to death shortly? Nope. Because um, becoming a were-creature and then ceasing being a were-creature uh, resets all of your like need for hunger meters. Real dragon. Oh, interesting. I wonder if they actually fixed it. That'd be interesting. Very interesting. All right, where's the top of this? Right here. Sweet. All 
Oh, the music. Yeah, no, that, that's because the dwarves decided to play a song. We do that when dwarves play a song. It's a rite of passage. This shouldn't cause any cave-ins. Shouldn't. And if it does, well... Mm. Oh, well then. Yeah, when the doors play drink in industry, um, we have a party. Although sometimes I'm more enthusiastic than other times, and right now I'm not that enthusiastic about it. I'm a little bit in panic mode currently. Well, not super in panic mode, but a little bit worried we may be about to get attacked, so. And I begin to feel like that, it's usually when I just kind of get focused on the game a little bit. I know if that's weird, but we do have enough population. We got some child snatchers that attempted to steal my kids. And, uh, you know, I do have this volcano here that I do at some point need to turn into a defensive structure, so we're working on that. You just started a fort uh, just for fun. Off sick from work right now? Okay. Just got giant monarch butterflies flapping around. Good biome or what 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 kinda what what kind of area is that in? Joyous Wilds, gotcha. What's a venture you? Protolore. <laughs> Very confused about this statement. I still don't know what you're talking about, but okay. Dwarf, narrow keys. What dwarf do you want is? Still don't know what we're talking about, but okay. I clearly just don't know the source material of the thing that is being talked about, so. Well, can't get all the way. Can go a chunk of the way. I mean, we were over we went over this earlier today. I have no idea what anything about the Venture Brothers, so This whole fort's pretty dope. Yeah, no, I agree. So essentially what I'm doing, I'm digging this little walkway around the edge of the volcano, okay? I'm probably going to widen it a little bit more. That circular area, that kind of spherical there, area there, is going to have a bridge that goes over it, and then 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 over it, all the way all the way back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position Mark's dwarves at the end, and we're going to shoot bolts at them, and we're also going to have catapults at the either at the end shooting over, because catapults don't friendly fire, or alternatively catapults at a slightly different angle throwing boulders at them and uh that is going to cause the baddies to go wee and then into the lava ideally so that that's my hope in fact i might make it go down two more levels and then two levels down uh could be yeah i, I might make it go down two levels and then i can have the marks dwarves up one level and the, like, around the edges. So I could put, like, the Marks Dwarves, like, up here. And then down here would be, like, this layer wouldn't be where we're firing the, um, the catapults. This layer down here could be where we're firing the catapults. In fact, I'm actually widening this a little bit. 
<laughs> we'll do that. Okay, so, Ashdol. I owe you and Nero Keys Dwarves. Because I completely blanked. So, Ashdol is the one I need to name first. Because I super didn't do that. So, Ash, what kind of dwarf would you like? Also, it's been almost an 11 hour stream. Again. That is the plan. And also, I'll have a way of draining the lava, which I haven't planned out just yet. But we'll have a way of draining out the lava, and the, the draining process of the lava will allow us to be able to, you know, um, let's just say, get the fun goal out of the bottom. Uh, the, the, the gear, the stuff, the things, the stuff of value, the, the goblinite, if you will. You can be uh, married to a dwarf who made a um, very, 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 very valuable bed stand. Um, also, your friend got a tank up bit. Well, that's very depressing. Also, I've asked this before, Ash. Uh, is that an I-A-N at the end of your name or an L-A-N? I think it's an I, and I think I mis just misspelled it. Can never tell if it's a capital I or a lowcase L? Because the Twitch font is terrible. It's an L. Okay. Uh, he is bored by reality and would much rather disappear utterly and forever into a world of made-up fantasy. Ah, so you're a, you're the dungeon master of the fort. Uh, he takes no pleasure in his talents and appearance and has an overbearing personality. He has an overinflated sense of self-worth and he is an optimist. He is somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger and he is quick to anger and he has a greedy streak. He tends to think before acting and he uh, and he generally is quite confident in his abilities when undertaking specific ventures. He often acts with compassion and he is grateful when others help him out. He tries to return favors and occasionally overindulges. He generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity and is not particularly interested in what others think of him and he tends to be a bit stubborn in changing his mind about things. He needs alcohol to get through the working day and is a hardened individual. Dreams of mastering a skill and personally views craftsmanship with disgust and would desecrate a so-called masterwork or two, if he could get away with it. Which is very funny, because his wife made an artifact, which is literally right there. Um, and if he could get away with it, and disregards tradition. I think I'm going to make you into a librarian. I think that you, you seem like a good scholar. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's put you, let's, let's make you into a scholar. All right, um, next up, B. Neuroki. Neuroki, what kind of dwarf do you want to be? Do you have any preferences? Then you'll join expeditions? Um, okay, well, that, that squad's all named up. Do you want to be Mabzuth, Atir, and Vak or Vakar? Also, damn, Ash, that's a big ass win. Holy crap. <laughs> you wanna be Atir? Okay, that's the dwarf that lost their leg earlier because they got hit by a minecart. <laughs> so you had a past injury, but. Why are we cursing in Russian? <laughs> What's going on? Okay, sweet. And also, I just have to say, because I haven't said this enough today. Hey, YouTube chat, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you guys. Even though I don't read what you guys say that often, I, I, I do see it. And so thank you very much for chilling over on the YouTube side of things. Um, so this is Atir, who's now Neurokeys. Uh, she never envies others, their statuses or situation or possessions. She is very polite and observes the appropriate rules of decorum. At when possible. And she does not uh, find most jokes humorous. She generally is quite confident in her abilities when undertaking specific ventures, and she doesn't try to get things done perfectly. She doesn't handle stress well, and she likes to take it easy. She often feels lustful, and she finds obligations confining, though she is conflicted by this for more than one reason. Uh, when she's nervous, she often drums her fingers. She needs alcohol to get through the working day and does not mind being outdoors, at least for a time, and is getting used to tragedy. Dreams of mastering a skill, and personally sees merrymaking as a waste. Values tranquility and a peaceful day, and sees sacrifice as wasteful and foolish. Like native aluminum, silver, and red flash opal, giant gazelle hoof, and the color eggplant, gems and querns and ballista parts, and cod 
or their fins. And the uh, site of the festive bewilderment, and when possible, prefers to consume banded knife fish and single grain wheat beer. And absolutely hates, hates moon snails. Can't stand them. Awful, disgusting creatures. Um, you're a member of the Heliotrope Sweet Creed. That's a name. Uh, you're uh, obviously a militia dwarf of the Living Fire. Also, I gotta say, the Living Fire is one of the better names I've made for a fort, just ever. Period. It's just that's it's just a really good name. I like how we're just in an, an era now where people just randomly tune into my chat with no context and say, Will Smith? <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> You're asking about the last fort? Because no, we are no longer playing in the Fortress of Slaprock. We, we've moved on from those days. Slaprock, uh, well, if you want to find out, you can type an exclamation point last fort. That'll give you some information. Oh, best name? I see. Well, these dwarves are going to get to that. We'll let them dig away. Well, these dwarves work on this. You know, I'm not entirely certain what I'm making this bridge into. I'm just kind of making a bridge. I'm suddenly kind of tempted to actually just make it into a Mark's Dwarf's Tower that goes all the way through this. Hmm. Maybe, actually. Because I could do, like, a circular tower thingy down here. Put ammo right there, but the problem is I've got those friggin' were creatures in the way. Well, at the very least, this dwarf is just sitting here meditating. This dwarf is just depressed. This dwarf is depressed. Okay, well, let's do the same things that I did with the last one. So we'll give you one room, which is my tavern, which is the fence fenced pumpkin on the speed on the topic of good names for things in Dwarf Fortress. One which is just going to be the Anything Goes Temple. And one which is going to be connected to the library. And I'm going to do the same with here. So I'm going to go meeting zone. Tavern. Meeting zone. Temple. Meeting zone. Library. And let's see if these other two... Well, you certainly don't want to. Where was this location again? All right, it's those helixes. So we're gonna go do that again. Although they're mostly out of stuff already, that was quick. Let's go somewhere else then. Ooh, summer guards, you've got a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go after summer guards. also has no... This is a castle, specifically. Looking for, like... Ooh, that's a destroyed tower. Well, that's gonna have fun in it. I'm looking for destroyed dwarven fortresses, because they tend to have the biggest piles of treasure and books. Watch me just oops, I accidentally eat a tower. Although, I will say, is this training... Oh, elv elves are here to trade. Is this training up your... No, it really isn't. <laughs> Dude's got no combat skills whatsoever. All 
All right, well, it's time to go trade with these elves. Um, and let's see what I can actually sell them. Because the answer is going to be not a whole lot. <laughs> Not a whole lot. As much as I would love to be able to trade them a whole lot, there really isn't a whole lot I can sell them. And it lasted about one season. Oh, I'm impressed. You last longer than I thought you would. Also, yeah, what, what were the actual threats? I, I remember you just like being like, well, I'm dying, and that was about it. So what were the actual threats? You know, I might just not trade with them. It's not that I don't want to trade with them. It's just like, I don't have anything I can sell them right now. Although I, I guess I could just cut some gems. Oh, actually I could sell them polished granite. Hold on. Wait, no, I can't. Cause I'm also then, <laughs> I'm encrusting furniture, furniture with polished granite. Which is, you know, good training, but... I'll just go cut some gems. We'll just do that! I'm going to sell them the minimum number of gems in it. It'll all be good! Dumb question, me. Is basalt allowed in this right now? Yes, it is. Okay, well then why <laughs> why are these not getting hauled into there? In that case, then, game. What's up, Kami Guru? Okay, so you right here. Some large rock crystals, is that all I really got? I guess so. I'd like you to cut those almond dines. Please cut those almond dines. I like how bored this dwarf is. Because you're too tired you're tired of not being able to acquire something for too long. Well, I have a question, chat. What should I let these dwarves acquire? What should I start making that these dwarves can acquire? We could we could try and get some clothing done. We could do hoods or something. Uh, we could do, like, rings. What, what do you think I should make that these dwarves can acquire? What, do you, what would you like to see me build, chat? Crowns, bracelets. Ooh. Oh, pfft. Can't, can't uh, send uh, Napalm because Napalm is currently going out to um, explore a location, so. We'll see you when you get back, Napalm, and then we can trade. Puzzle cubes. Those are toys, though. Adults can't acquire those. Please, what do you think those are? Things for children? Do 15 of these and let's do 15 wheelbarrows. A uh, wooden wheelbarrow. Let's queue up 15 of them. If clothing should be hoods since they're subtle, there's nothing subtle about hoods, dude. Does subtle scribe have a theme? I don't know, but you should subtle scribe. <laughs> um, yes, it does. We, we are, we're building a library that's mostly non combatant. Um, based on stealing and writing books, which I haven't, I haven't started writing yet, books yet, but we're working on the process of getting to the point where I can steal books. And um, I'm not going to be directly attacking things. Uh, we're going to be letting things come, and come to me and I'm going to uh, set them on fire <clears throat> with my volcano. But mostly library. I, and it, that's about all we got for a theme currently. Also, apparently, it's going to be a pink death <laughs> area. 
But you know, that'll be fun. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what part of you makes uh, you think that hoods are subtle, but that is the opposite of subtle as you can get as far as I'm concerned. Well, at least these dwarves seem to be significantly happier. I saw a dwarf tell a story of the moval of freeways of the position of broker of the, of the living of fate in the mid-autumn of 521. The fenced punk, pump, pumpkin, it's interesting. Man, they're telling stories about the dwarves that are currently, like... Ended up getting stuck in this situation. Man, that's so sad. You're socializing with nobody. You're just thirsty and attending meeting. At least you're meditating. This dwarf understands how to not die when entrapped. Okay, well. I realize I also have this craft store shop over here. Where traders will leave the map, they will take the shortest path to the exit. Unless you mean, like, when? And if they're stuck on your map, deconstruct your, um, your trading depot. But uh, they will take the shortest path to the edge of the map. Either through the caverns or out through the surface. All right, let's do craft store shop. Chat wants crowns. Crowns, crowns, crowns. And I will put a stockpile along here for crown, 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 crowns. Let's also say ear, earrings, uh, ring, oops, ring, and amulets. As for materials, I don't give a fuck. Um, I'm then going to make crown, well, rock crown, 250. Get to it, dwarves. Can they arrive through the caverns? No. As cool as that would be, unfortunately, that is not a thing. It's like a weirdly compact fort. Actually, do I need beds? Let's just double check. Nope, just a baby who doesn't have a bed, but that's okay. Uh... Huh. Well, I guess this is my life now, hey? Um, the where camel representative Zolag Neglusamodu uh, is... Saspuspus? Has come? A very large camel twisted into humanoid form. It is crazed for blood and flesh. And its eyes glow mahogany. Its raw umber hair is unkept. You will know why you fear the night. I mean, I know what representative means, so. Trust me. This thing wants to talk by chewing on your forehead. That's about it. Also, um... It's a goblin. The member of the tired doom. Has a child with this with the same name as theirs, an only daughter even. Oh. Wow. You've been busy. Killed a lot of beak dogs. A lot of big dogs. Cats, horses, cavies. Ducks, pigs, turkeys, llamas, rams. Humans, goblins. Is he a butcher? Nope, he's a representative. Although he might have butchering skills. He is a leather worker. 
But uh, I kind of doubt that he's a butcher. Expert ambusher schemer. All right, so the important question is this. Where are the hell are my dwarves at right now? Okay, so there's a bunch back here. I think. Okay, who are you? All right, almost. Yvesh. Okay. I am going to go down into here. Oopsies, I just turned it off. Turn it back on. Let's go here. Add everybody. Just to slightly dissuade the dwarves from coming out. And we will follow this thing. Turn by turn. Uh oh. Run almost. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Its sprite is hysterical. Terror mess the fierce. Oh my god. Doesn't feel anything while in conflict. It hasn't actually hit anything yet. Okay. Going after uh, Yuvesh Wirebirds. Okay, you got attacked by the Werepig, which is... Okay, Th this dwarf actually got into the a fight with the last were creature. And the last thing they said in combat was, Freeways is really dead, I cannot give in to sadness. This dwarf's going, oh no, not again. Um... Combat still hasn't started, so the dwarf clearly did a good job dodging. Ral the jeweler, my master gem cutter. You better back the fuck up, dude. Representative ba backs away. Oh man. Losing my best uh, jeweler. Yep, bites the jeweler. Just gonna lock the doors. Well, he killed my master jeweler. But somebody clearly got some hits in on him because he's bleeding. Oh, I see. There's a weaver fighting with him too? Who I'm not seeing. Where's this weaver? It's not you. But there's something else fighting with it. Which I'm a little bit concerned by, because Weaver Detan, what do you? Uh, <laughs> okay, must have like shown up and ran, I guess. Anyway, oh, I see, you're literally right on top of him. That makes sense. Well, so far so good. Dwarf hasn't been bit by it. Did get some hits in, so it's bleeding. The representative says, I have uh, improved my fighting. That was satisfying. It appears that you're not improving your fighting just enough. I've been injured badly, says. I cannot find hope. After biting the weaver in the upper leg. The weaver strikes the representative in the upper leg with a copper pick, tearing the muscle. And the representative says, I have improved my fighting. That was satisfying. They go back to fighting. The creature's still bleeding. Bleeding stops. She becomes... Oh, wow, you're not a goblin. And here I thought you were a goblin. Well, you do have goblin tendencies. Also dreams of attaining a rank in society. Thinks romance is very important. Uh-huh. I don't think you know what romance is, Dwarf. Nor do I think you can remember what romance is. What a horrible, horrible time that you've had. Well, this one I will have to let escape. On the bright side, the dwarves that got bit both died. On the sad side, I just lost my best gem cutter. Chat, can I get some Fs for Ral? Ral was my best gem cutter. And it's a damn shame that he had to die that way. He was the one that was teaching all the other dwarves in the gem cutters guild. It's an 
absolute catastrophe. And let's also go here and make two slate coffins. Or rock coffins, I suppose. Well, let's just queue up ten, why not? Make them all out of slate. Let's just double check that I got that front door unlocked. I think I did. Yes, I did. At least we spotted them earlier, so, you know, we have more time now. And we won't be outside as much once we get the front door built. Or the front entryway constructed. I played Dota during beta. I didn't like it very much. <laughs> Did I play any specific characters? Uh, Tiny and Axe. I played during the beta for Dota 2 and thought it was bad, and then went back to playing League of Legends. I'm not actually joking. <laughs> And no, I don't want to talk about those games. And if you sit here and talk at me about League of Legends for more than one line of text, which you just did, so you're on your last line, I may have to time you out due to my own brain collapsing. Because I quit that game Cold Turkey in 2014, and frankly, I never want to play it again. Oh, I played it, like, when it was in closed beta, when it was a separate executable, mate. <laughs> like, I don't mean when I played it in beta. I mean when it was, like, not fully public. Before Ranked was put in. It just never bit me because I was basically done with that type of game by that point. Um, I think those games are awful and I don't want to think about them. If you want to think about them, cool. Go elsewhere. <laughs> or to my Discord or anything else. Just leave me alone about them. If you got it, you wouldn't have brought them up in the first place. Remember the keyword there was used to. <laughs> Hi, here to learn. I'm blind. Um, I simply told myself I would never stream League and just kept streaming. And you know, it worked. And also, I told myself I would never play bad games again that just made me angry and made my life and relationships, friendships, and everything that I did have at the time dissolve and fall apart. Um, so, frankly... <laughs> fucking play games that make your life better. Don't play games that make your life worse. What's up, Drid? Thank you very much for that massive raid. How's things? You still uh, slaving away at Might and Magic? If you guys want to see some interesting video games, go give that man a follow. Play some cool shit. Hi, I'm Greg. I play way too much Dwarf Fortress. Sometimes I play other games. And then I yell at my chat uh, for making me think about League of Legends for more than 90 seconds. <laughs> or at least that was the last 90 seconds. Some migrants have arrived. Well, I guess that's the raid. Oh, where the heck was that layer? There it is. I hotkey it. We just lost some dwarves to a very unfortunate um, were-camel attack. And if you're wondering where the camel is now, it's dead. To us, anyway. Oh, totally. Yeah, no, I mean, like, if, if, if you're doing something that actively is having a negative impact on your life, pro tip, fucking stop! <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you know, it's, it is. Also, did I trade with those merchants yet? I don't think I did. Because I was waiting for... Yeah, because I, I was waiting for the... Military to get back, because that's where my dwarf who can do the trading is. Or was. Cages, what do they bring? No! Just some wooden cages with nothing much else. Ooh, a star sapphire pedestal. That I will actually buy. Um, also, I will buy this uh, fancy native gold thing if I had the money for it, but I don't, so I won't. Instead, I will simply buy their crutches, so I don't have to make them. Thanks, LVs.
But unfortunately, addiction negates logic usually, so it doesn't really matter, you know, how much logic you have in your brain. Uh, if you have an addiction, it's generally pretty hard to shake, it turns out. But um, thank you once again, seriously, for the raid. This fort's pretty cool. We started it up the other day. Yesterday. So most of this work was done today. We're up to 67 dwarfs. We just recently got another migrant wave, which just showed up. We are running off and stealing books from around the world and building ourselves a collection in our library. And so far, I think it's going pretty well. Good chunk of the world doesn't like us, though, which is a bit of a shame, but, you know, what can you really do? You can use logic to help with addiction. I would, as somebody who has addictive tendencies, um, for me, logic doesn't exist in addiction. If I have an addiction to something, logic doesn't exist and I need third-party intervention or help. Um, at least that's been my past experience. So if, if you are capable of doing that, or if you feel that you are capable of doing that, or if you know people who have been capable of doing that, then I have to say, they are stronger people than me. <laughs> Which is why I just don't gamble. Period. <laughs> well then you can't have had that serious of an addiction. But I also don't know what your life was like, so. Your ADHD surpasses your logic in your addictions. My microdosing of meth suppresses but the lack of logic in my addictions, but still not perfect. You feel like I'm not actually blind. I feel like you're not actually deskness. So here's the beauty of being visually impaired is you get twats like this person popping into the into your chat and being like, hey, I feel like you're not actually blind because they have no idea what the definition of the word blind actually is. I am severely visually impaired and legally blind. So you can take your opinion and realize that you are extraordinarily wrong and very rude and you better apologize. You're also probably stuck in an ad so you can't hear me anyway. I feel like you don't know what you're talking about. Trees and other travesties. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Do you think he has a problem with elves? No, just trees. I mean, trees have a habit of collapsing on dwarves and killing their friends, so I think that's the bigger issue. The vast majority of people who are legally blind do not have no vision. Oh. Especially considering my name started off as self-deprecating humor that my friends would throw at me all the time, like... You know. No, people just need to learn to ask questions instead of ac make accusations. I, I don't think people need to learn literally everything. It doesn't matter. Like, you, you don't need to learn literally everything, right? That's silly. The I One of the beautiful things about being human is that we are capable of speaking with one or another and communicating. So you're... Arguing with somebody who you've never met before, Deskness, in their chat room about whether or not they have a diagnosed visual impairment. I think that you are a fucking moron. Get a life, child. <laughs> That's my end of the discussion. Um, it's kind of the only new unique thing about... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Who can I start in the game? What do you mean? Cool. About a username. More than anything. It's okay. They have one more, like, attempt. They have one more chance to grow up, but I don't think they will. Um, let's just do Slate here primarily. I'm going to head to bed. We'll see you later. We'll see you tomorrow, probably.
That's all right, though. It's the reality of uh, existing in a public space. If you exist in a public space, people are going to do that. It's called having fame and success. Or even just success, by that logic. There's a zombie dragon. <laughs> zombie dragons scare me, man. Although, I, I've always wondered, because I've never actually encountered one, I've always wondered if they retain their invulnerability to fire. But no, I respect the hell out of that, Nebuchadnezzar. You also identify as blind? Okay, cool. Well, I am going to ban you for being a cunt. <laughs> like I said, you had one more opportunity to, re to redeem yourself, and all you're doing now is the equivalent of going up to a trans person and yelling at the I am an attack helicopter bullshit at them. So if you're saying that you identify as blind, I, I you can just take a sharp object and jam it in your eyeballs and see how you speak and see after that. Just realize that there are some people who have unique experiences in life that are different from your own that do not be or need to be invalidated because you seemingly disagree with them. And remember that there's things like invisible disabilities that exist and people that have difficulties in life purely based off of the fact that they're a different person than you. Sawed off, you flying cunt. Got a life. Crawl out of your mother's basement sometime. Maybe one day you'll be able to afford a place to live, but not with that kind of attitude. Why didn't that guy identify as funny? I mean, you know. Here's the thing, right? I've always had this statement about, like, For anybody who's newer here, because there are some newer names in chat, for clarity here, uh, I have coloboma of the retina and the iris in both eyes. My left eye barely works and has severe blind spots or severe tunnel vision and floating blind spots. And my right eye doesn't work at all. I can see light. That's it. Um, in direct sun, I have almost no vision. Um, and... My eye doctor for years has been telling me to use a white cane, but I choose not to mostly out of just like personal, like stupidity reasons. So it's one of those, I can't legally drive in any Western country. I probably drive in India, but I don't think anybody legally drives in India. People just drive in India. Um, <laughs> and uh, frankly, when I get people like that, I have a very, 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 very short string a seeing eye cat i don't really like cats <laughs> i like cats if i don't own the cat if it's another person's cat i like cats if that makes any sense so no i'd rather not get a cat if i had the option honestly i like my neighbor's cats they're lovely because they don't live in my apartment my ex used to have cats but they lived in my apartment so i didn't like them so if you want an idea of what i see just for anybody who's watching uh grab a toilet paper tube okay Close your right eye, hold the toilet paper tube over your left eye, and then spin in circles for a couple seconds with both your eyes closed, and then punch yourself in the head so that you get all nights, lots and lots and lots of spots. Or just like jam your finger into your eye really, really far hard, but not hard enough to actually hurt your eye, so you see a bunch of spots, and then open your eyes up. That's about what I see. There's a reason I use like 1920 by 1080 p monitors with like Chrome zoomed in 400%. <laughs> Well, you know, is what it is. I really hope that people like that learn that there's better things to do with your life. Ah, uh, it's genetic. Allegedly, my great-grandfather on my mom's side had bad eyesight, but nobody fucking knows what was wrong with him. It's one of those things that can skip generations, too. It's a birth defect, basically.
It also means that none of my inter internal organs work prop, or it's highly likely that most of my internal organs don't work properly, which is true. Um, and uh, like, I, I'm probably gonna die young. <laughs> I also have a lot of other like stupid fucking health problems because of it, but I'm not gonna elaborate or dwell on the details of that shit. Even with my eyesight, you read 90%. That's because I've been doing this shit for 10 years. Like, you should have seen me trying to read 10 years ago. Jesus Christ. And for whatever it's worth, one of the most successful Fortnite players of all time had the username blind, by the way, had absolutely nothing wrong with his eyes. So, like... Yeah. <laughs> It's not even like it's something that you need to have something wrong with you to be able to have that as a username to begin with. Which, I don't know. 10,000 hour rule? You want to see how many hours I have lo loaded on my bot, ro Rook? <laughs> That's just on the bot, which I didn't get until... I didn't get this bot. Or th this... Uh, the current logs that this bot is using until I got OnkBot, which I think was 2016? I think? And I started streaming in 2013. Admittedly, I didn't stream anywhere near as many hours until about 2016. 10 years, mate. 10 years. Yeah, it's been a minute. That one annoyance TikTok person or whatever who spammed the Discord because they wanted to buy the van. Oh, no, it wasn't a TikTok person. It, it was the it was literally that um the fort the Fortnite guy. But it was like his fans that were like spamming my Discord. Unless you're thinking of something else, you might be thinking of something else. This is gonna be my hospital. No, I've believe it or not, I've streamed other games. <laughs> And also, this wasn't the game I played until actively on stream until late 2018. So, no, no, that's not, that, that is not representative of my hours in Dwarf Fortress. How much time do I have in DF? This is a game that wasn't on Steam until 2022. So, I don't know. I started playing it in 2018. I don't really have an accurate number for you. I have exactly as many hours as I have. I suppose. I knew. I'm not sorry. I didn't play pre steam. Clearly, you didn't understand what I just said, so I will repeat myself. I played this game for a really long time before it came out on Steam. The first time I installed Dwarf Fortress was in 2009. Back in the Counter-Strike days of my history. Because I'd just beaten Adom, and I asked a friend of mine on Ventrilo, I need a new game to play while waiting in between games. So I have no idea how many hours I have on this game. Steam release was December 2022, yes, Snow. So, I don't know. I have tens of thousands of hours, probably. Yep, that is a potato. Potato with a beardy. I used to rent a Ventrilo server. Please don't call me a Chad. <laughs> There's nothing about me that is Chad-like. Alright, so... Let's just do 20 copper tables. Even though I don't need that many, we'll do 20. Finished goods with cut gems. Oh, it's, that's because those are not cut gems. Those are definitely rocks. Well, let's get some cut gems going. Who's my best gem cutter? I do have some perf Oh, man, that's such a bummer. It's like I've lost all of my best gem cutters. God damn it. Got master gem setters, but... 
I just lost my best gem cutter. It's a bloody shame, that. use TeamSpeak. I never got into TeamSpeak. Um, I don't know. The, this this is just me being a weirdo, and also me and my friends at the time being weirdos, I suppose. But we enjoyed... Well, not maybe enjoyed is the wrong word. We used different services for different things. So we used um, Ventrilo for voice chat, and um... IRC for text chat at the time. The services that mixed them both, the servers were more expensive and harder to host. So we would like swap back and forth depending on what we were what we were doing and who was playing basically. I really need to check my farmer count because I think I'm way too low. Yep. I am in fact way too goddamn low. Let's in let's add you and throw some more dwarves into the farming gerb. Except for you. Uh, both my air quotes squads are here. Stole more books twice. Send you to Shake Pocket. Shake Pocket and drop coin, please. Twitch chat still runs on IRC. Facts. It's just very, very, very buried underneath it now. And not as obvious as it used to be. I haven't really seen many dwarves claiming crowns, but... What's the blocks I have the most? Let's just use quartzite blocks for these bedrooms, because those will be easy to find, and I got a lot of them. And this will allow me to pretty quickly get coffers and whatnot into here. Oh, one other thing I guess I kind of want to say about that kid who was trying to get a rise out of me is you also need to remember that I've been doing this long enough that there are some people who just don't like me, right? And when you've been doing this for as long as I have, every now and again, you'll get somebody who's made a new account recently who goes, oh, fuck, I remember that guy. Let's go yell at him because they know how to get a rise out of me. And if I were to have a, do if I had a dollar to bet, which I don't, I'm not a betting person because as I said earlier, I don't gamble. But uh, if I were to bet, that person has probably done that to me before. Also, just, like, worth noting. Usually takes me a moment to, like, come to terms with that while it's happening. Because it's always very pointed. But usually what happens is I, I get... Usually they're idiots and just make new accounts and they just pop in. And then Twitch immediately nerfs them because it's just like, oh, this person is sus because they just made an account like 90 seconds ago and they immediately typed in your chat and like they're already here. And it's like, so they're probably not actually a, like somebody who's acting uh, in a way that is intended to, you know, join a community or whatever. There's one who does it relatively frequently, except the weirdness about that person is, and this is why I think this, per this particular person is weirdly sad, is they always join and they act like somebody who just came from YouTube is the way they act. Clear Talk like they just came from YouTube. Hey, pilot, what's up? Um, and they just start talking perfectly normally and asking questions about Dwarf Fortress. But as they start asking questions, they just get stranger and stranger. And then randomly they start talking about how wonderful a human being Notch is because of his opinions on trans people. Um, and it just kind of comes out of nowhere. And it is like the weirdest, like hard turn every time. It's like, oh, it's good to see you again. Banned. <laughs> It's a very, very, very weird individual, and I kind of want to meet this person just so that I can ask them why. <laughs> it's like, what is... I, I get it. You you are somebody who has a lot of hatred, but wh why? <laughs> why? It's just bizarre to me. 
It's like almost funny. It's so audacious. You stayed up late last night and you're paying for it? Oh, okay. We'll see you later, pilot. Take care of yourself, mate. Got some shut eye at some point. People in weird ice. It certainly seems that way. Yeah, it's weird. They didn't give that. They don't give that first impression. But you know, meet enough people, and eventually you'll you'll meet some sort of fucking weirdo. In what place am I? Like where in the world? I'm in Vancouver, Canada. Well, not technically in Vancouver, but I'm a, I'm in a suburb of Vancouver, Canada. Well, not quite. Not. I'm in a neighboring city to Vancouver, Canada that isn't a suburb. That's a sentence. Many questions are stupid. Doesn't make them an illegitimate question. Is there a way to replace a walls like the ones you built? Is there a way to, is there an easy way to replace? You deconstruct them and construct new ones. I, I don't know if that counts as easy in your mind, but no, you can't like just build over top of them if that's what you're asking. You used to not be able to build walls on floors. Too inarticulate to type? Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm almost too in our brain lit to think, so. And I don't, I don't even think that's a word. The other day, I tried to explain because I had to. Yikes. I mean, I, I don't know anything about being autistic because ironically, it's something I've been tested for and I don't have it. Just like I've been tested for dyslexia, which is this, this this one person got like weirdly convinced on in my YouTube comments for like a week that I have dyslexia until I like responded with a paragraph saying, hey, literally like I got tested for this when I was a kid because I couldn't read properly when I was a child. Like I, I'm not dyslexic, I swear. <laughs> Please stop commenting this because it's just inaccurate. <laughs> Nope. No, there there isn't a quick way to like rebuild walls. In the current game. There's supposed to be a bed here, and I thought that I placed a bed there a couple times because I noted it in my head. I was like, I need to put a bed here, and then I never did it, I guess. Oh my god, when did I get a microphone? I completely missed that. <laughs> anyway, we have 75 dwarves now. Oh boy. And I need a farmer's guild. Oh boy. Okay, well. Uh, where am I going to put that? <laughs> you know, whenever I see that sentence come up, when, like, people state unironically that they think that vaccines cause autism, I can't help but laugh because it's such a stupid thing to say. <laughs> It's it's almost a, to me it's I I know that people take it lit seriously and are like incredibly misguided and it's really sad but at the same time it's like it's almost as dumb to me as birds aren't real. <laughs> anyway, um, Rolf, what kind of what kind of dwarf would you like? <laughs> uh, sorry, don't know what came over me there. pretty good comparison eh I mean it causes people a lot of pain so it's a really shitty comparison because I don't think birds aren't real causes anybody any pain except for maybe some bird watchers who are really confused when teenagers shout that at them any happy one okay so you want Iden is that good you have a fine bid and bed 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 and you're remembering it and that make you happy sweet okay uh, well, you're, I can see why you're happy. Although, you're probably also moving really slowly, Rolf. Uh, because you don't have one. You have two children. And how do I know this? Because you're carrying both of them. Are they- hold on, are they- are they twins?
One year old. Okay. One year. I think they might be twins, Jeff. <laughs> Damn. Let's see. Are you? Are they actually twins? Uh, you're. Um. Hmm. Interesting. You only have a mem you only have a memory of giving birth to a girl. I yeah, I think these are probably twins. Huh. That's like a 1 in 200, isn't it? Or some or higher even? How can society function without loyalty? We must be able to have faith in each other, says Rolf. She feels a strong urge to pay back any favor done for her. What's the biggest thing you got to focus on when starting a new fort? Uh, booze, beds, beer. Bo no, sorry. Biscuits, beer, and beds. They Dwarves need a place to sleep. Dwarves need a place to get food. Dwarves need beer. They also have an artifact being started. Uh, she feels a strong need to pay back any favor done for her. She has a noticeable lack of, of perseverance, and she finds this troubling as she values perseverance. She is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance or culture, and she has an active imagination. Um... She values perseverance, and she is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance of culture. She's an active imagination. She acts with compassion. She finds obligations confining, though she is conflicted by this for more than one reason. She is curious and eager to learn, and she is quite polite. She does not go out of her way to help others, and she generally is quite confident in her abilities when undertaking specific ventures. Uh, she becomes When she becomes exasperated, she clicks her tongue. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. Beats Bears Battlestar Galactica? Sure, yes. Uh, dreams uh, of creating a great work of art and this dream was realized and personally greatly respects individuals that persevere through their trials and labors and values tranquility and a peaceful day uh, she likes bauxite, iron, fortification, agate and cabinets and catapult parts and guinea fowl for their social nature and the sound of the sincillating sister and the sight of the festive bewilderment when, the, when, when possible prefers to consume salmon and finger mullet beer and absolutely hates mussels Welcome to the fortress. You're a member of the Coven Song? And uh, that dwarf has already begun a mysterious construction. What are you making? Wow. Bones, slate, turkey leather, tapered cut, clear, tourmalines, and slate something or another. Um, I'm going to make... Upper pedestals. Ten of them. And I'm going to make ourselves a spot back here. For artifacts. And I also need more places for my dwarves to read. Because turns out we're running out of those. Am I not making thrones? Apparently not. Copper thrones it is. After the first trade caravan, uh, should I work on getting armor? The beauty of Dwarf Fortress is this, right? Do you know? You clearly want a build order. You need to remember that this is a game that you can do anything in any order, right? You should focus, focus on what you think that you need at the time and you should focus on mechanics that you feel interested in learning because that is a way that you will get the most out of this video game and learn it at a good pace. Otherwise, what will inevitably end up happening is you will get stuck in a rut of playing the same way every single time, and it'll be very difficult for you to find new interesting ways to play the game because you're going to trick your brain into thinking that you can only play this game one way. So my advice to you is... Set a goal for a fort. And if that is what you were saying, uh, building up we armors and weapons and starting up a military, do that. If it is the polar opposite of that, do something completely different. Do something that you think is interesting with the fort that you currently have, with the tools that you are currently given, and have fun with it. Otherwise, what's going to end up happening is you are going to convince yourself that there's only one way to play the game, which is just not the case.
Well, the thing is, right? You're at you're clear. You clearly seem to know how to play the game to a degree, right? So my advice is stop asking me. Um, what I will say though is do this. Um, there's a page on the wiki called Playstyle Challenge. Which I used to have bookmarked and apparently no longer do. But I will link this to you in the YouTube chat. Also, I'm sticking the Twitch chat for anybody who's curious. Um, and I will show it here on stream. This is the playstyle challenge. Of course, it's part of an older page of the wiki, but um, essentially, these are different playstyles. Play styles. Um, some of the, most of these are still doable. Some of these are not. Pick one. At random, roll a dice even, uh, but pick one. And 28 drinks later. All right, so 28 drinks later. Okay, embark on an evil biome. Set up a wall around your camp. Never leave the perimeters. All migrants are survivors from the zombie-plagued cities. Uh, decide carefully whether to let uh, whether to let them into your walls. Bonus, uh, if you have a reason to believe that migrants are infected, sacrifice them to Armok. <laughs> Remember... He loves magma. Uh, bonus: Only marks dwarves for defense, and you should get should and you shouldn't get near zombies. They tend to bite. If they are wounded, they must be quarantined and shall therefore die. It's basically playing as if there was a you know that thing. Uh, what about another one? Uh, let's say Dwarftopia. Embark with only the dwarves that have the ma have max skills with no more than one minor. Okay. Um, Bring extra copper picks. Uh, separate the fortress into two parts, a vibrant city above and a depressed slum below. Bonus, uh, reverse the order elite dwarves to live underground while the poor have to scrap. That's actually really hard to do. Do not understand any circumstances. Let said immigrants socialize whatsoever with the elite. Said nobody else who matters will be upset when they die. Well, there you go. So, you know. Have fun. That's what I would advise. A lot of content creators take the path of least resistance, which is usually the meta. Dwarf Fortress doesn't have a meta, and if you think Dwarf Fortress has a meta, stop thinking that. Um, and I also... If you watch my streams, literally the only things that I do consistently at the beginning is I start brewing and I start farming. Everything else is generally in a different order. Sometimes I dig straight down to the basement, as far down as possible, and start building. Sometimes I start playing with waterworks. Sometimes I build in a canyon. Sometimes I build on a volcano. Sometimes I start digging defenses. Sometimes I say, screw the defenses. Sometimes I build on the surface. Sometimes I build underground. Sometimes I build just shallow. Sometimes I build in a tower. Sometimes I, you know, do things different every time. Because if you do things the same every time, the game will get absurdly boring. And also, you need to remember, if, if I was playing the Dwarf Fortress meta, I would have a square room underground with with uh, two by two bedrooms for every single dwarf. Every single dwarf would have exactly what they need. We'd be farming in the center of the room and no dwarf would be allowed to go outside and enemies would either be crushed by a drawbridge at such a far distance that my dwarves wouldn't see it or alternatively just be ignored because you don't need to fight the enemies. You can make a perfectly 100% um, with almost 100%. Some dwarf, dwarven personalities will never be happy like this. But you can more or less make a self-sustaining fortress underground, just ignoring the outside world. If you get so far and then they all die one way or another? I mean, that's called Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress doesn't really have any goals, right? You need to remember that, too. There isn't, like, some people will say, oh, you know, it's become the mountain home. Fucking who cares if you become the mountain home? It doesn't matter. Like, it's not like you get a score or anything for, like, getting the mountain home. Your fortress is the original make-your-own-fun sandbox. Make your own fun. Oh, no, t totally. But, like, re Reverend, like, you need to realize weapon material only matters to a point. If you're being attacked by enemies with way better materials on, on their weapons, yeah, you're going to have a hard time. But, like, 
it doesn't matter how good their weapons are if you dump lava on their head. This is a game about role-playing, Proto Lore. You need to realize that, right? It's sort of a Library of Alexandria theme. Not really. I'm st I've started a few forts like that. They never end that way, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And also certainly not on premium. Also, when you say Library of Alexandria, I'm assuming you mean like acquire every book in the world, right? Also, yeah, one dwarf, one like legendary tier dwarf can destroy an entire goblin army. Dwarves are stupidly overpowered. Like stupidly overpowered. Let's just make some rock mechanisms. Dwarves uh, get a thing called martial trance. Um, dwarves, when they go into a martial trance, essentially get massive dodge, uh, parry, and block bonuses and they lose the ability to get tired. The higher their skills in fighting, the longer a martial trance can last. None, other, none of the other creatures in the world can get a martial trance. And because of that, you could have like two to five. Like, I've taken out armies of 200 goblins with mounts with 10 dwarves that are legendary that just get into a martial trance and just curb stomp them. And realized how overpowered dwarves are? Until you try to make them fight an undead giant zombie whale. <laughs> Good luck. Um, Attis, the bone carver, has created Curl Lanix. A mule bone crown. And offers it to the living fire. A mule bone crown, you say. This is a mule bone crown. All craft ship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with oval rock crystal cabochons and decorated with mule bone and encircled with bands of turkey leather and rose cut clear zircons. Tormulates, not zircons. Uh, this object is adorned with hanging rings of slate and menaces with spikes of slate. I need to make a, a farmer's guild, but I have no idea where the hell to put it. Should just put it here, shouldn't I? Or like here. Or up here. Yeah, that's where I'll put it. We'll, we'll go up here. It's also granite here. Can start digging into the granite. I'll just make it large so I don't have to worry too much about the value of it. I also really need to finish digging out that entryway. Because we are going to start getting invaded soon-ish. That or I need to seal it off and just give my dwarves access to it. I think I can also move most of the pigs here. I feel like a lot of the descriptions of the items sound like they would look pretty cool aesthetically, but... Drowsy, unconscious, and hungry. Okay. I really need to um, make more beds for these dwarves. The reason the moods are going down is because I currently don't have enough beds for everybody. Or bedrooms for everybody. What I think I'm going to do, because this is starting to look kind of ugly to me, is I'm going to cut out a lot of these walkways. And I'm just going to make some... Split hallway here that's going to just have some more bedrooms. It's not going to be the same exact, like... Stairs going up, stairs going down style, but it'll be as good as I can get it. Because turns out, population just went up to 81, and I need to get these bedrooms, or these dwarves housed. Like stat. <laughs> this is true. A, uh... 
A maximum skill dwarf uh, with a pigtail sock can best a dwarf with... I, I will never get used to referring to adamantine as candy. I, I know it's the dwarf fortress thing. It, it's always been weird to me. I will never be okay with it. So uh, an adamantine sword, uh, a, a, a recruit with an adamantine sword can be beat by a master skill dwarf with a sock. Or just like, you know, a wooden shield. <laughs> I mean, I, I once had a legendary combat dwarf, this was in a relatively recent fort, who couldn't walk, had no legs, but would still, like, systematically, like, crawl towards the enemy and beat them to death with her shield. I don't know how she... She just had one working arm, so she'd just, like, I guess, like, inchworm her way along the ground and then just... Bonk! And just, like, cave brains in. It was... Pretty impressive. <laughs> Just thwack things to death. It's like, if you're not afraid now, you will be in a moment. What are you even going to do about it? It's like, I've got a shield, bitch. Get on the ground. You have to work. Don't work too hard, Rolf. Pretty goth, yeah. I don't imagine that the spikes are anywhere near as spiky as I think some people think. I think a lot of people imagine the spikes very, like, I don't know, seen or whatever, like actual, like, spikes. The way I imagine the spikes is they're just, like, triangles. Like, just triangle patterns. What? Uh, so I did get a perfect gem, this thing. Um, I got a crown just now. Which is down there. I've got uh, that crutch as well. Which is this thing. It's probably in the hospital, honestly. I'll do a gem window right there, and then a door. Menaces with spikes? Unless it has, yeah, well, I mean, things can be menacing, but them not be dangerous, you know? <laughs> I think we envision things differently, though. And that's okay. So I got all these super fancy crowns everywhere now. Let's see if dwarves actually use them. Stuff's getting put away. Although I don't... I wonder, actually, if a dwarf is running around with that splint on their leg, which is <laughs> actually possible. A friend of mine growing up's dad was born on the leap year. Oh, shit. Is it actually the 29th? No. Okay. No, tomorrow's the 29th. <sighs> I have to move money into my checking account. I, I hate February. February is one of the worst months of the year because it's the month before tax season and it's also the month where I get the worst value for my rent. I think that that's a pretty legitimate reason to dislike a month of the year. I don't know if you feel the same way, chat, but... Yeah, no, but Stone said it's the 29th and uh, it, it, I, I'm... Yeah, anyway. I got I got one more day. <laughs> I have one more day. Snatchers, think of the childs. Uh oh, it's mildly concerning how quickly they got in here. So let's send our absolutely untrained soldiers with copper swords to go punch goblins who probably have no weapons. This dwarf is moving very slowly. Are you hauling a you're hauling a boulder? Well, that would be why. 
How about you? Are you moving quicker? Ah, I see. You've already killed one. Look at that! Well done, dwarf. Well done, dude. You killed Matt of the Goblin. Uh, and you killed... Kashmir killed him dead by, um... Slashing the goblin thief in the head with her with her copper short sword and beheaded him. Good on you. Well done. <laughs> Feels terrified after experiencing trauma. That's fine. Fortunately, they didn't become a zombie 250,000 times because there is, in fact, a necromancer just above on the same stairwell. So there's a very real possibility that could happen. <laughs> it's just funny that he's still very slowly crawling up here. And put it into a pit. You wouldn't be able to put it into a pit because um, it would just attack anybody. Things need to be imprisoned in order to put them in a pit. So I'd have to get in, into a cage trap. And also, you don't just click on them and say reanimate. That's not quite how that works. Things only get reanimated if it actively attacks the neck or can only get reanimated if something is actively attacking the necromancer at the time where there's a when there also happens to be a body in the vicinity so basically necromancers don't just like reanimate things for no reason you actually have to like attack the necromancer it's it there's there's extra steps than just you know reanimate and then reanimates it's not like you just scream enhance really loudly and the picture zooms in you actually have to like you know get software to zoom the picture in um now what i'm going to do actually I'm going to do fortifications all the way along this. 31. Okay. Boom. Progress. It's being made. Although, maybe I don't actually want to do this that wide. Maybe I want to do it this way. Yeah, we're actually going to cut the side off this. Uh, many, 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 many times. Couple, maybe like a dozen times over the years. Yvonne? Also, it's very hard to do a full zombie fort. Because it's like... A 60-40 chance that you actually get zombies that are friendly. Most of them are just, like, not. And then, ha like, half of the ones that you then resurrect are not smart or useful in any way. God? Which one? There's many gods in this world. So which gods' laws are we violating? And which gods thought that they had the right to make laws? This is Dwarf Fortress. Come on. Also, who, who's trying to say that, like, necromancy isn't natural? You're the one spewing heresy, I think, here. We'll see you later, Taylor. Cheers, <laughs> Taylor. A necromancer is a perfectly normal dwarf with some weird ass hobbies and an obsession an obs and an obsession with hoarding dead bodies. There's nothing weird about that, okay? I mean, at least one of those things that they do is very relatable. I do it all the time myself. All right, let's um also dig this way. Bunch of stuff I got of mine over there. Hoarding dead bodies? I don't know. That's, that's for me to know and you not to find out. Are you a cop? <laughs> I mean, they do hoard dead bodies. Like, literally, they will send out scouting, scouting parties to, like, steal bodies from your body pile if you have an outdoor body pile. Which I think is hysterical, but, you know. It's one of my favorite interactions with another faction type. It's just a bunch of purple dudes show up and steal bodies. It's like, what are you doing? Recruiting. 
It's just like one of the greatest moments I ever had in Dwarf Fortress was when I got attacked by an army of necromancers and intelligent undead, and most of the intelligent undead had coffins equipped with more bodies in them. It's like they brought back up. It's like, wow. I love that. Um, Napalm Sideburns meet with, met with the human necromancer high treasure. Oh. Oh. Okay. Greetings to your people. There is much to discuss, clearly. Um, please bring me wood. And don't ask too many questions. And I'm going to sell them crowns. Because for some reason, I have a surplus. I can't quite figure out why. A necromancer is just a very strange I was gonna say life extender, but I don't actually think that's like a word. I think I need to make clothes soon. Fortunately, I can I can see something really good. The, the humans listened to my demands from last time. They brought me elephants from the looks of things, and it also looks like they have brought me pandas. Not that I'll be able to do anything except for eat them and make panda hats, but, you know. I'm very excited to acquire my new pandas to eat them, of course. What happens when you kill a dwarf with Werecris and, reanim and reanimate them? Do you really want to know? <laughs> I got a crash the last time this happened, but I got attacked by a were creature that got directly into my fort. And the were, I think it was a were sheep, started killing dwarves. And the dwarves immediately started popping back to life as fully functional, ready to murder were creatures. And it was distressing. You've never seen pandas? I've seen them a few times. I order them from humans and make Panda Express. Because, like, you can't keep them alive because it literally requires, um, it literally requires bamboo on your map. Otherwise, you just can't feed them. So I, I could use DF hack, but, because they're grazing, technically. I also require, requested bears from them. So here's hoping they also brought me bears. Because then I can give my military bears. Well, maybe not my melee. Maybe just, like, my best scholars. I can give them, like, war grizzly bears to follow them around. Guild hall. So this will be a farmer guild. Farmer guild. There it goes. Dunk. Big enough? Nope. Not high enough value. Not high enough value. We'll put two of those in there, and I'll just throw some crowns on those. And I will accept the Farmer's Guild. Part of the reason it's still lower value is because um, it's not entirely paved or anything. So let's just start smoothing walls. I only need to get the value up to 2,000, so that's pretty low. You like bears? Bears are pretty cool creatures. I like grizzly bears as war animals because they don't need to be pastured and they don't need to graze. So you can just let them free roam. I don't like war animals that can't free roam. Okay. So they brought two elephants, one grizzly, goddamn, and uh, some pandas. Well, why is the elephant so goddamn expensive? Um... I'm just not going to buy the pandas right now. I'll try it on a second purchase. All right, what else can I grab? 
Am I using elephants for ivory? Uh, well, I, I will use them for war animals eventually, but currently I'm just raising them because they take 10 years to mature to adulthood. And believe it or not, that's a very, 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 very long time. So I'm going to raise them and then we'll, we'll work our way up from there. We'll figure out what we'll do after that. I'll be honest with you, I've never actually actively used elephants for ivory. That is an expensive as hell bucket, holy shit. I'm gonna sell two buckets and make a killing. Animals are not supposed to domesticate themselves, so that seems like a bug. Unless you just had like one at the start, if that's what you mean. Man, this one bucket this hazelwood bucket is worth two pandas and two cages. Sweet. Um, okay, so let's just go here. Go creatures, pets and livestock. Panda. Slaughter, slaughter. Although, you know what? I'm gonna give it the, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt that they won't immediately starve to death. Also, I'm realizing I need to make my, my elephant area bigger. It's slightly concerning. Also, hey, we got some trees growing up finally. I haven't... I, I don't remember the last time I exported lavish meals. Like seriously, I, I I don't remember the last time I did that. So we are going to make a much larger place. My elephants to graze. And also, I'm going to dig this up a layer, or a good chunk of it, basically right here. So that I... Also get trees growing in here potentially. It doesn't make sense it goes stale. Oh, I mean it, it's it's a bug. <laughs> like exporting lavish meals is a bug slash exploit. Whatever you want to call it. But uh, it is absolutely a bug. I will also remove a chunk of this just to make it look less artificial. I'm going to dig into this a little bit. Once again, make it look less artificial. Grab this eraser tool. It's this back to, once again, make it look less artificial. And um, this is far too straight of a line, so let's make it look less boring. So chat room, tomorrow Keeper RL releases. So I think the plan for the stream tomorrow is the first, like, four hours of stream is going to be door fort and then we will swap to keeper rl and if i have the energy because i'm going away this weekend uh i might do a friday stream but we'll see no promises on that where else would the lava come from lazy man
okay, but in like a video game like Dwarf Fortress, where else would the lava come from then? <laughs> anyway, yes, they all go down to the lava sea. Dwarf Fortress doesn't quite have the capabilities I think you're crediting it with. Oh my god, that's a lot of baby pigs. It's a lot of swine. Bacon's on the menu, dwarfs. Bacon's on the menu. No, I... Well, I mean... If I could... Cause the volcano to... Erupt is the wrong word. If I could cause the volcano to... Solidify, maybe? But practically, no. Not really. This is going to look super sketchy for a minute, but I swear it's not actually as sketchy as it looks. But it may be a dwarf risk. Um, I'm not sure how you would, would do... Oh no, is this dropping stuff into lava? That's a shame. Oh well. Maybe it's not. It's hard to tell. I'm not gonna lie, this whole thing is making me super nervous. I keep thinking it's gonna cave in for some reason. This is going to be where my Mark Storbs are going to defend from. Did I really make an entire row up here out of ramps? I did. Am I building an island? No, not really. I'm building um, a defensive structure. I'm building battlements. Oh, did you mention it or something and I didn't see it in chat? Dolphin? Uh, only if he had writing materials. He theoretically could. He theoretically could, unless he learned it from something else. But yeah, necromancers do have the ability to write the secrets of life and death down. You didn't want a backseat? Oh, it's fine. I mean, I noticed it eventually, which is part of the beauty of it, right? All right. Ad break should be done now. It's okay. They'll get it fixed. That'll get it fixed. It's just going to take a minute. This is pretty satisfying to watch, I'm not going to lie. So this right here is going to be where I'm going to tell my soldiers to station. I keep saying soldiers. They're not really soldiers. My, my Mark's Dwarves to station. This is going to be the way in here. So they're going to enter this way, and they're going to run all the way to the end. Um, there's so much blood right there. That's distressing. Um, they're gonna, they, they'll be able to run all the way to the end. There's just gonna be a wall right here. I might make a way on top of it, like an actual walkway or something to enter the fort. I don't know. Maybe have a suspended walkway underneath it or something. Probably not though. I think the much more likely thing here is that... This is just going to be a Mark's Dwarf battlement. And the bad guys are going to walk along this way, all the way through here. 
And then they're going to walk underneath this, and they're going to walk in here. And then they're going to walk over lava, and then over lava, and then over lava, and then into the fort. That's the plan. So it's going to be a lot of walking over lava. And the idea is I'm going to use bone bolts, which are mostly just going to fall into lava. And are pretty replaceable. But I appreciate your, your restraint on the backseat. I do. I really wish my neighbors would turn their TV down. Feels kind of weird being the only person who doesn't have a home theater set up running at full blast 24-7 in their apartment, but you know. It is what it is. All right, all that's now done. Sweet. Oh, wait, no, there's one. Missed one. Let's throw that in. Excellent. So get a bunch more beds done. I'm not going to have enough yet, though. You're going to read before bed? Me too. What you're going to read? Some more migrants have arrived. You know what? Zuntir does say he's fine. Chat room, I think now is a good time for us to call it for the day, to be honest. Uh, because I've been streaming for 12 hours and 10 minutes. And uh, uh, 11 hours and 14 minutes, respectively, on the YouTube side of things. YouTube, we're shutting you off now. Thank you much for hanging out. And uh, Twitch Jack, can you say goodnight, YouTube? You greatly appreciate it. But what about trunk gaming? I'll have to contemplate that concept. All right, chat room. So don't run off. We are going to go raid somebody. And, and I assume you would like to raid somebody.